Good morning from Casper, Wyoming, as we get ready for a double dip here. Girls and boys basketball. It's the Jackson Bronx against the Kelly Walsh Trojans. All the action right here on Jackson Hole Radio, brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hole. Young Life, where they're all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. And the town square ends of Jackson Hole, including the Antler and Elk Country and Cowboy Village Resort and 49er Inn and Suites. For Jackson Hole Radio, I'm Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K. Hi, Kimmy. Hi. And we're ready. About 11 minutes away to tap for these girls who have an early start. Boys will be immediately following. Jim's starting to fill up here at Kelly Walsh. Yeah. And... There's going to be a loud band. It's going to be a loud band, yeah. Why don't I, I'll turn our music down and let the band do their <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's loud enough. Here, here's the band mic. Oh, they just stopped. Yeah, that, <laughs> they're going to be a loud band. That's good. That's fun. Well, we're excited for that. For these uh, girls, well, obviously, Jackson Bronx still looking for that first win of the of the season. And for the boys, boy, they have got to come up with some answers quick. Uh, they're on a three-game skid. They would love to halt that, but it's not going to be easy on the road here against Kelly Walsh. But uh, Jackson Bronx, if you uh, did not join us last night or missed it, the uh, girls were on the wrong end of a bit of a lopsided loss uh, to Rock Springs, 53-12, the final in that. Yeah. For the girls, that's their uh, 16th loss of the season to no wins yet. And for the boys, yeah, a heartbreaker. A team that they could have, should have beat, but did not. The final of that one, 56-38. The final looks worse than it was, but yeah. still, Jackson just didn't score enough. Not nearly enough. 12 points in the second half alone. Yeah. That's it. That's 12, the whole second half. It's shocking. Um, the overall record now for the boys, 10 of 6. Now, the good news is they're 3-2 and two in conference with their 3 and 0 oh in quadrant in that southwest uh, quadrant and really the only team you got to worry about there is Star Valley. And how did Star Valley do yesterday? And well, Jackson has the advantage so far against the Star Valley Braves in head-to-head -head meetings, Jackson having beat the Braves in Jackson. However, we got to go down and play them in Afton. Now, let's say Jackson cannot get that win down there in Star Valley and they end up splitting and they end up with the identical records in the quadrant, then it would go down to tiebreaker common opponents like these. And Star Valley is doing the same road trip. We are backwards, Rock Springs, Kelly Walsh, and the Star Valley boys did lose to this Kelly Walsh team last night. So that was good news. Okay. Star Valley helping us out a little bit, but the boys, uh, Jackson boys, got to help themselves and complete their end of the bargain, which is winning this afternoon. And that won't be easy. We'll talk about that later. We'll also start with the girls and some of uh, the unique things about this game. This is a possible, if you look at the schedule, possible winnable game for these girls. Oh, awesome. Yeah, this uh, Kelly Walsh team is, you know, about as good as we are, maybe a little better, but they're very, very physical. That's the thing. So we'll talk more about Kelly Walsh, the Lady Trojans, Lady Bronx matchup. We'll come back. It's part of the Lady Bronx pregame show on Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. 
Dynamite does not go moon that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Back to the action, Kelly Walsh, and uh, about six minutes away from tap time for the girls. For the Lady Bronx, yeah, they uh, they played hard last night, but just not enough for Rock Springs. That Rock Springs team is pretty good. That girls team, really pretty pretty darn good. But this matchup should be a little more doable for the Lady Bronx. Um, uh, Kelly Walsh looks like they have a lot of seniors, though. Kelly Walsh, uh, they also have a lot of length as you'll hear coach Shockley talk about yeah they they're an experienced team a lot of senior leadership um, don't be fooled by the record the overall record for Kelly Walsh coming in two and 13 one and two in conference they're ranked number 12 whereas the Lady Bronx are ranked 16th these Lady Trojans on a four game losing streak they lost last night to Star Valley 60 to 38 and they lost also Rock Springs on Thursday night, 48-28. And both these girls and boys Trojans teams are playing their third game back to back yeah, to back. So to row. yeah, they should be a little tired. That's what we're going to talk about and think about the all-time <laughs> matchup between these two teams. Jackson's never beat Kelly Walsh going back the last 11 games to 2016, 0-11 against these Kelly Walsh Trojans. And yeah, this. Uh, uh, the Kelly Walsh team now the record's not great they don't shoot it very well offensively averaging 37 points a game that's ranked 12th the Lady Bronx offense is ranked well, yeah dead last 16 but uh, they don't shoot uh, from the floor percentage wise they're ranked 13th they hit about 30% uh, of their shots that's not great they don't shoot the three ball particularly well uh, and their defense is not quite average so all the numbers there for Kelly Walsh would make you think if you're coach Sean Shockley that your girls have a chance here to be competitive and we'll get to keys to the game in a minute but one thing Kelly Walsh does have is good size this is a big team and a very physical team here's what coach Shockley had to say about facing these Kelly Walsh lady Trojans you guys see this again today with Rock Springs and Kelly Walsh tomorrow. It's their length. Uh, um, when they get into us, we are such a small team that if we cannot get our, our front shoulder through and keep our back hip between the, our, our body between the basketball and the defender, the length gets so many steals on the ball just by deflections and taking it from us. We work hard on that all the time. You know, we put Coach Johnson, who's 6'4", and Coach Bosch is 6'1", and they go out there and they D up the basketball pretty hard and work on getting those passing angles, but we get sped up, and they're, you know, and that's that's the hardest part for us is uh, when we go look at Kelly Walsh, they're big. They're and a bunch they're of physical. They, they play are. hard. They are, and, and they're not as bad as their record shows either. They just don't put the ball in the hoop much either. But, you know, it, it, that's, like I said, what happens again to us is we play well for a while, and then you look up there, we're still at four points, and they're at 12. Then they're at 16. And okay, now we got to five. You know, and then they're yeah. up to 19 or 20. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're shooting without a conscience. So it doesn't matter. They yeah. can relax, you know, and just keep firing it up there. And, and the basket gets big. And those, you know, we, we haven't played to what the scores reflect. I mean, every, every coach that comes afterwards says, you know what, you're a lot better in person than you are when you watch the game and see the film. Yeah. So we just don't realize you score, you guys don't score. <laughs> you know, and going, you're right. We play hard we try to do all the little things but you know we're waiting for that day to come and all of a sudden somebody's hot and we make three or four shots in a game and somebody else feeds off of that and they hit one or two and gosh yeah. we you know i guess we gotta get to 20 before we get to 30 <laughs> but i i keep hoping yeah. that we will you know bust loose and and, and look at us you know so it wasn't that hard <laughs> Yeah, Coach Shockley, you know, that's that's why what he had to say.
Kelly is w one of my keys to the game. First and foremost, you got to deal with Kelly Walsh's size and physicality. We don't have uh, the size of these girls on the roster, uh, but they are big. You can see that visually, yeah. and they're very, very physical team, particularly number four, the Carruth girl, Peyton Carruth. Wait till you see her. She averages eight points a game, and she, she's very physical down low. So it's going to be a long, uh, I would say, another long night for, but it's not a night, another long afternoon for Mads Holland and Sierra Johnson, yes, the two, two bigs for the Bronx, <laughs> so we're going to have to deal with a lot of size down low in the paint. And I say use your speed. Uh, this is a Trojan team that's played twice back-to-back uh, yeah. -back games. Now, you're not fresh either. You played in Rock Springs last night, if you're the Lady Bronx. You, you slept in a hotel room, and you know, you're not as fresh as you can be doing the road warrior thing but still this is just your second game back to back Kelly Walsh this will be their third game and because of their size and physicality you know Kelly Walsh is a big heavy team they don't like to run up and down the court and even though that's not your strength of your Jackson I try to make them run a little bit and then finally keep it close the closer you keep it the more you can feel like you're in this game let's get the uh, player introductions to you that's Young Life of Jackson Hole sponsoring this look at the girls as they introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ashlyn Chamberlain, a freshman. Hi, I'm Naomi Roper, and I'm a senior. My name is Jim Rudyon Garcia, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Zoe Bosch, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Allison Birchup, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Marlo Strickland, freshman. Hi, my name is Sofia vasquez Baez, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Lucy Webb, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Sierra Johnson, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Raina Rose, and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Mads Holland, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Hayden Block, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Trinity Green, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Kat Inky, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Holly Rowe, and I'm a freshman. All right, that's the Young Life of Jackson Hole player introductions and the starting lineups being introduced now. Naomi Roper. Naomi Roper for Jackson. Zoe Bosch, Lucy Webb. The usual suspects so far. Sierra Johnson and Matt Holland. Yep. Okay. Jackson girls wearing their road grays. I don't know if they washed them from last night. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Road grays trimmed in black and orange. And for the Kelly Walsh Lady Trojans, the fans rise oh, to pay tribute Febreze. to their girls. It's called Febreze. You just spray Febreze on your uniform. Oh. That's all. <laughs> Kennedy Tavella, the sophomore, averaging four points a game, gets a start along with Riley Alberts, a senior, averaging 6.7. Peyton Carruth, we talked about her. She is tough down low. Watch out. She averages eight a game. Sydney Eskew, another senior, averaging 10 points a game. And Aubrey Ann Browning, another senior, averaging about five points a game. Casper in their home, or Kelly Walsh in their home white, trimmed in green. And we're ready to go. Jackson moving right to left on your radio dial. Hopefully you're joining us on YouTube if you're able to do so. Let's go to YouTube. Jackson Hole Radio is the channel. And it's going to be Sierra Johnson tapping with, looks like, Peyton Carruth. And we're set to get this one started. Tap is won by Jackson. Good job by Sierra Johnson. And the Lady Bronx will start with the ball. Zoe Bosch looking at man-to-man -man defense for Kelly Walsh. Bosch is kind of fast to Johnson. Actually worked, but then the turnover to Lucy Webb. Uh, Roper stepped out of bounds. Yeah. All right. That's what happened. Kelly Walsh ball. Yeah, sloppy start for Jackson. Bringing it up is Riley Alberts to where court mate Davila now inside, kick back out, long three from Carruth, bounces off the back of the rim, no good, but there with the board is Browning, Aubrey and Browning, and Kelly Walsh has a two-nothing lead, and 
going to be tough to out-rebound this Kelly Walsh team. You don't want to give them more chances than they need. Mads Hollins to Roper. Roper, top of the key to Webb. She'll try a long three. That's short and out of bounds. Good idea. Lucy Webb was open. I like it. She triggered it, just not quite got it dialed in yet. 2-0 in the early going. Just a minute burned here in this one with Riley Alberts with the ball. The senior kicks it back to Browning, who has the only points of the game. Long three there, no good from... Ooh. Let's see who took that shot. Still trying to get used I to my 15. cheat sheet. Okay. Browning, I believe. Uh, that was Davila that took the long three. Jackson ball. They're down 2 nothing. Just hanging close to this team. Going to be so important emotionally. As Coach Shockley said, if you look up, you know, start the second quarter and you're in this, that would feel a lot better. As a foul on Riley Albert's first foul of the game. It's going to go Kelly Walsh's way. As Jackson will reset here. Zoe Bosch to inbounds from underneath her own net. Surveys the situation. Bounce pass oh. attentive for Webb. That's off the foot of Carruth. Jackson will retain possession. Oh, I'm liking this. We got a two-tone shoes out there. A blue and a yellow. Zoe Bosch, yeah, DeBoer had two different kicks on last night for Rock Springs. Bosch bounce pass into Holland. She'll try a long three, Ooh. actually a long two. Yes. Naomi Roper on the back side with the rebound. Yes. Good job. She outworked Sydney Askew. Zoe Bosch, chant coming up from the band, trying to make some noise as bounce pass to Webb. Webb being watched by Askew, mm. holds the ball up over her head, bounce pass into Holland, loose ball now, and two girls pile jump. on top of it. It's Webb and Askew, and the jump ball arrow favors the Trojans for now, but we'll flip the possession arrow. Kelly Walsh ball and a... Kind of a sloppy, ugly start to this one. Neither of these teams shoot very well. Nice steal there by Bosch, but she's out of bounds. Pass intended on that far side for Sydney Askew, but a good job by Bosch to read it. She has some basketball IQ, and it's getting better. Yeah. Zoe. Well, is that because her dad's also a coach? Okay. I mean, could have something to do with it. I mean. Askew with it now, far side, wide open three there, and that's good. Riley Alberts was left open in the backside, and she hits it. It's 5 nothing. Kelly Walsh, two minutes in in the opening frame. If you just joined us, we're just underway. Zoe Bosch, look out, double-team trap, but gets it to Webb. Good job by Lucy Webb to make herself uh. available. Now she coughs it up to Davila, up ahead to Caruth, who we said she's physical, just knocked down Bosch, but couldn't get the layer to go. Now Askew tries one, or Browning, rather, and that's off the mark and out of bounds. So these Kelly Walsh girls not shooting it great yet. Although Alberts hit that three a moment ago. But we got to get those rebounds so they can't shoot more than once. Bosch's pass intended for Sierra Johnson is knocked out of bounds. Zoe Bosch inbounds right in front of the Trojan bench to Naomi Roper. Back to Bosch. Zoe walks it to the top of the circle, standing on the emblem of the Trojan. Gives it to Sierra Johnson. Bounce pass to Mads Holland. Holland works it. Top of the key to Zoe Bosch. She backs up and looks things over again. Jackson resets. Good movement going on in the interior. Just not a pass in there to get it to him. And there's a whistle. What's this? Away from the play. And a foul on Jackson. That's going to be Johnson who gets rung up. I didn't see it. Replay. I just said there was some good <laughs> movement underneath, and Sierra Johnson got caught with a push off. Her first foul, Jackson's first. So it's Kelly Walsh ball now with 4.50 to go in the opening frame. Long three, good. Sydney Askew. And the one thing you hope doesn't happen if you're Jackson is Kelly Walsh suddenly discovers they can shoot. Bosch whips a no-look pass to Lucy Webb. She's double-teamed and gets it back to Zoe. Zoe finds an open Sierra Johnson. She'll take the shot. Too strong. Rebound is Davila. And here comes Kelly Walsh already with an 8-0 lead. Whistle here and a palming the ball. A little carry. And 
Jackson will get it back, and now Shockley with that early game timeout wants to settle things down for the visiting team. We'll stay here. Lady Bronx down 8-0. Now, really, the Jackson girls, I can't tell if they look like a team that's too intimidated by being here. I don't think so. They've been in some big games. I think they're looking a little sleepwalky, maybe. I mean, I they're feel just that way. not. <laughs> a couple of uh, unforced errors, which we've seen all season. And uh, a couple of good looks, but the shots were just off. And they could just dial in the shooting. And again, it's Coach Shockley saying working on real time shooting. Like, you know, they practice amongst themselves, but they're all freshmen. They're just playing freshmen against freshmen. You know, they yeah. don't have any girls who are seniors who are really, really good to practice against. So the practice speed is not game speed. Here's Lucy Webb with it now, double team, but she works her way out of it with a dribble, gets it to Zoe Bosch. Bosch, whoa, she got bumped into by Askew, and Sydney's going to pick up a foul here. That's her first. Team second, 4.08 to go. Jackson down eight, zip. Naomi Roper with it now. Same five girls going all the way for both teams so far. Nobody off the bench. Roper to Johnson to Holland. She'll try a 20-footer. Too strong. And on the backside rebound, Kennedy Davila grabs it, and she'll bring it across the timeline. Kelly Walsh up, eats it. Eight nothing. Inside pass there to Browning and reach in there, I think, Johnson. Mm, Johnson or Holland? Yep, Johnson. Sierra Johnson commits the foul. That's her second already, and we're at 348 in the first. Davila will inbounds, and Coach Shockley is going to go get Johnson here with Allison Burcham. Also, Raina Rhodes checks in for Lucy Webb. Davila inbounds pass to Browning. She'll try a quick oh. shot. Good defense on her there, and she's short with it. I think possibly Bosch got a piece of it. Here's Raina Rhodes. Reyna working on Peyton Carruth. Bounce pass off Carruth's leg, but Reyna gets it right back, gives it to Burcham. Burcham to Holland, nice spin move. Here baseline, Zoe Bosch drives, shoots, oh, just short, oh, gets her own rebound, puts it up, no good. And now she's over the back of Browning, and no foul. They'll just say out of bounds off of oh. Zoe. Nice baseline drive That's by Bosch. Awesome. Nice rebound, her own rebound, and just couldn't quite get either one. One to go. Uh, Kelly Walsh ball, 315 to go on the first. It's the Lady Trojans eight. Jackson nothing. Davila, top of the key to Carruth. Far side, whipping it around the perimeter. Now to Carruth. Wide open shot from Davila coming. No good off the back of the iron. And a pile up for the rebound. There was about five girls in there chasing that <laughs> rebound of the whistle. That could have been any one of them. And it'll be Kelly Walsh. The push off, and that's going to be on Carruth, her second. Peyton plays a strong game. Raina Rhodes, double team trap now stolen away. Ooh. Taken away by, I don't have a 22. <laughs> I'm going to need help there. Carruth's shot, no good, but she got hacked on the arm, and I believe Bertram, the guilty party. Allison Bertram's first, that's team. Third, and it'll send to team the line fourth. Carruth. Oh, wait, our team third. Sorry. They have four fouls. We have Carruth three. eyes it and gets Ooh. it. First points in a while here. Carruth, a, no, we don't have any stats from the line on her. Hasn't been there enough. She has not played a bunch this year, and I heard the Star Valley guys talking last night. They think maybe she's been injured. I'm not sure, because at mm -hmm. times, she's the best player on the floor for them, and she has not appeared in many ball games. I think she started the season hurt or was hurt somewhere there. Here's Mads Hollins on that far side, double team, so whips Ooh. it over to Lucy Webb, and it's stolen away. Coming the other way is 22, shot up and no good. Rebound, Kendall Allaire, her shot doesn't go, and it's out of bounds, Kelly Walsh possession. Can't think of who the 22 would be. I got a 24, Maddie Bullard. Mm. Wait. 
Here's Riley Alberts. She drains one, and that's a three. Riley Alberts makes it 13 nothing. Kelly Walsh. Raina Rhodes whips it far side of Lucy Webb. Bounce pass intended for Holland. Off the hands of Davila and out of bounds. Substitutions from the Kelly Walsh side is Kayla Gilliam, Coach Gilliam. Will send in Peyton Hill, I believe. Yep, that's Hill for her first look. Roper bounce pass into Burcham. Burcham, double team, has a little bit of trouble here. She's trying to decide, well, she wants to pass to Rhodes, but that never got there, but it went right to Mads Holland. Ooh. Mads oh. tries a shot off the side of the backboard. Rebound Webb, Lucy Way puts out. one up, too strong. And Riley Alberts with it. She's one on two, but she's gonna try to go right to the hole. No good with her layup attempt, but the foul on the way there. Often good things will happen when you go to the cylinder. And Riley Alberts draws the foul. The fourth on Jackson, the first on Naomi Roper. Naomi Roper to the line. Alberts, a 56% free throw shooter, gets a shooter's roll there and makes it 14 0. Roper comes out, Zoe Bosch back in, and Sierra Johnson back in for Holland and Bosch. Alberts with her second, that's good as well. And it's 15, nothing Kelly Walsh, still with 1.45 to go in the first. Zoe Bosch to inbounds. Not the start Coach Shockley was hoping for. Trying to catch a Trojan team a little tired. They don't look tired to me. Lucy Webb, bounce pass to Burcham. Allison Burcham gives it to Raina Rhodes on that far side baseline. Now works it around to Lucy Webb. Webb will walk it to the free throw line. Out bounce pass to Sierra Johnson. She'll drive baseline, turn around, kick it out to Webb. Webb looks, picks up a double team. Wide open road. She'll try oh. it. Just missed. And the rebound goes to Cena Curry. As Kelly Walsh has worked through the bench, they've put 10 girls out there already. 10 different players with it now is the mysterious 22. They get so many off the bench, I can't keep track of them. Kendall Alert, Alaire with it. Gets it to Sydney Askew, cross side, 22 shot, good. And she is drilled after the shot. I don't know who hit her, but she went down hard. That was a long two, now stolen away. Twenty two with it. She hits the deck again for the second time. Gets up. Looks like she's OK. Got to adjust my player roster. I'm going to try to find that 22 when we get a break here. Meanwhile, Jackson with the ball. Allison Bertram tries a long three oh, off the glass. That's no good. Rebound scooping up with it is Lucy Webb. Her shot. Fails to make the mark, but she ran in hard into 22, and they're going to get her for the block. Oh, boy, I thought she was kind of set. But Webb to the line, trying to get Jackson's first points here. Lucy Webb, a 38% free throw shooter. It's been all Kelly Wall so far with 21 seconds to go, and Webb misses that first one. 17 points for Kelly Walsh. Nothing yet for the Lady Bronx, says Lucy Webb. Eyes this, still has the fingers on her left hand taped up off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound chased down by Sydney Eskew, and she works up ahead to Peyton Hill. Hill calls out the play. Far side to 22, now worked into 33, who I also, no, that's Kendall Allaire. And good, that's Cindy Askew, the senior. She is their three ball threat, and she hit a three there to make it 20 to nothing as the quarter ends. We'll be right back with the second quarter and a name to the mysterious 22 for the Lady Trojans. Right here in the home of the Bronx, Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. 
Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. This is KC95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back to the live action. I have no 22 anywhere on any roster I can find. And the only thing I can think is it's a number change. Unless, do you see a 24 over there? And I don't. Maybe it's Maddie Bullard wearing the 22 instead of her 24. So I'm going to call her Bullard. All the apologies if I'm wrong to these lady Trojans. But hey, you got to update your rosters. <laughs> That's on you, Zoe Bosch, who's tied up with who we're going to call Medi Bullard. And a whistle there, and Bullard's going to pick up, I believe, her second foul. Yeah, so maybe yes. she'll foul out. <laughs> we'll get her out of here. I'll, I'll listen to see if the guy says a name. Okay, good. I'll take that out would, my headphones, help. yeah. Yeah. Now a uh, whistle here is Bosch was taking a long time to inbounds. And it's just an instructional moment, perhaps. I don't know what he'd call you. We point right at Bullard, if that is indeed Bullard. And if it's a foul, she gets a fast three. They're going to send Bosch to the line. Oh. Zoe was trying to trigger in. Oh, technical. Oh, and she may have put a hand in the face. It looked like Ooh. she did something to obstruct Zoe Bosch's inbounds pass. The ref explained it patiently, and Zoe hits that, by the way, so Jax is finally on the board. The ref went over and explained it to who we think is Maddie Bullard. Now I feel really bad, because if it's not Maddie Bullard, the Bullard family thinks, our girl would never do that. And now Bullard comes out, if that's her, and she's replaced by Davila. Yeah. As the second shot by Bosch is missed. Jackson ball, Reyna Rhodes has it, being watched by, oh no, number 12. <laughs> I don't have a 12 either. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm not. Um, Reyna Rhodes with it for Jackson. Rhodes out to Lucy Webb. Webb in the near corner to Bosch. She'll try a baseline three. Just short, rebound batted around, finally into the hands of Peyton Hill. Hill bounce pass inside to Kira Lucero, and she hits the shot. Good job by Lucero, and Kelly Wall showing us literally a dozen players right now, two of which we can't even identify. Zoe Bosch with it now for Jackson. Hands off to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes, top of the key. He's going to, oh, she has a double dribble. Yeah, Raina picked up her dribble and then thought, I'm going to dribble some more here and try to find open room. But no, I don't let you do that. Bringing the ball up court is Kennedy Devilla. The Lady Trojans got almost all bench players out there now. There's a shot from 12. We don't know who that is. That could be Lauren Laami, who's 11, because I don't see an 11 out there. I think these girls might be changing their numbers, possibly. Do I, oh, do we see? Zoe Bosch brings it up for Jackson. 6.30 to go in the first half. Jackson down 22-1. Webb to Raina Rhodes. Raina Rhodes drives. She might have walked there. She did travel on Rhodes. So twice now Raina's double dribbled and traveled. As the band just told a, us. There was a lot of traffic there. Inbounds coming here from Peyton Hill. Gives it to Davila. Kennedy Davila, the sophomore, works it across the midcourt stripe. Over to 12, who could be Lauren Laami. 
We're well, not there isn't sure. a loving out there. Oh, okay. Never mind. That Lamy is her own self. She gets a rebound there and puts it up and in. Lauren Laami has her first points of the afternoon. Naomi Roper with it now. Out to Lucy Webb. Webb to Zoe Bosch. Settles things down way up here, top of the key. Webb now travels right side at the right wing. Way out there at the elbow. She's not going to shoot from there. And now timeout by Coach Sean Shockley. And he wants to have another teaching moment here. Jackson Bronx, the Lady Bronx offense just looks stagnant. And I know, you know, we're past the midway mark in the season, and it's time to start talking about basketball things rather than just are the girls nervous, are the girls, you know, basketball stuff. And right now the offense just there's nothing going on. Nobody wants to shoot. Nobody seems to be open for a shot. And it's just, and you're playing right now against the, the Kelly Walsh bench players. This is the Kelly Walsh Lady Trojan team that comes into the game down in the bottom of rankings of just about every stat. They're two and 13, and they're playing their bench players, and still the Lady Bronx are struggling just to get some offense generated. And Coach Shockley called a timeout, and maybe he's going to draw something up here. Lucy Webb with it now for Jackson. I know we've seen the girls play better than this. Webb's bounce pass to Sierra Johnson was in her feet. Not a good pass. Nothing Sierra could do with it, and it's out of bounds. Kelly Walsh ball now. Kennedy Devilla will bring it across midcourt. Devilla with Lucy Webb on her. Pulls up a dribble. Now top of the key to Lamy. Lamy. Gives it to, oh, that's that quick stutter step that they call a travel. I don't think it's a travel. It, do you know, I but, think it depends on the ref. Like, yeah. when you watch different games, sometimes it's called, sometimes it's not called. They it call just that depends one. on how they see it, I think, on the floor. They called it on number 12, who we don't have. Now 13, it's Miana Cardenas. Cardenas uh, checks in, so we do have her. I think it is. Oh, and. Coming off limping is, is Kira Lucero, who does have two points on a nice board and bucket. She comes off limping. He doesn't say their names over there loud enough for me to hear. Okay, listen close. I'll try to be quiet, but that's not my <laughs> that's not my nature. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm Zoe not Bosch laughing. with a left hand dribble to Mads Holland. Mads Holland with Lamy on her gets to Ooh. oh a nice oh. pass to Zoe Bosch. Her shot no good. Mads Holland or Sierra Johnson with the rebound just missed, but she'll pick up a foul. That's going to be on Lauren Lamy. Her first, I believe they still don't. Yeah, there it is up on the board. That's the Trojans' eighth foul, and they can afford it. If they're going to play 15 players, they can all get fouls. Here's Johnson to the line. She gets it. Jackson makes it 24-2 to two with five minutes to go in the first half. Sierra with her second shot here. 33% free throw shooter on the season. And she's good with that. She's 100% today. That a girl. Sierra Johnson cuts the lead to 21. Kelly Walsh brings it up. It's Davila. Gets a nice pick there from Aubrey Ann Browning. Now Davila will try a little baseline 15 footer. No good. Rebound Johnson. She does that better than any other Lady Bronx. Johnson averaging four and a half boards a game. Zoe Bosch with it now on the near elbow. Davila watching her. Man to man defense all game long for the Lady Trojans. Unlike the boys, later we'll see Kelly Walsh play exclusively zone. Holland gets in a wrestling match with Lamy, but ends up getting the ball, getting it to Roper, and now Roper is fouled. Oh, that's nice. By number 12. Oh, and we're in the bonus, so. Yeah, that's the ninth team foul on the Lady Trojans, so Roper will go to the line. Naomi, a 14% free throw shooter. Even more substitutions. It's like the clown car over there for Kelly Walsh. I don't know where these new fresh girls keep coming from. Up from under the first row of the bleachers. More players just keep coming out. That's Peyton Carruth back in oh, the action. Oh, nice Naomi. Good job by Naomi Roper. She makes the first. This is not her forte, but the lead cut to 20. 
4.26 to go. I don't know. Maybe you can start chewing in this lead a little bit going into the locker room. Yes. With a little better outlook. Yeah, Naomi Roper makes both. So I like that improvement. Up the court comes Riley Alberts. Works it far side to Sydney Askew. Askew to Carruth. Peyton Carruth picks up a triple team. Kicks out. Riley uh. Alberts. Oh, that's a three. And that's her third, maybe, from distance. I remember at least two. Good job, Alberts. And Kelly Walsh answers the two Naomi Roper free throws with a triple. Here's Kat Ankeny, her first action into Harley Rommel, but that pass off her leg and now taken away. Turnover. Kelly Walsh with it, 12 out top of the key to Carruth inside. Nice move by Browning, but the left hand layer won't go. Aubrey Ann Browning, the senior, another one of those girls with length. This is a sizable Kelly Walsh team. Zoe Boss trying to put a move on her mark. Sydney Askew gives it to Kat Harley Rommel. Rommel picks up her dribble. She's in trouble. Come help her. Somebody does. It's Bosch. Zoe now settles things down. Watched by Sydney Askew. It's freshman on senior. Into Mads Holland. Mads drives 12 into the rack. Good job there by Mads posting up, but then just oh. passed it away. Stolen away by Sydney Askew. Here comes Kelly Walsh. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. Kelly Walsh up 27 to 5. Browning inside move. Shot no good. Good defense by Harley Rommel. The rebound no good either, but Harley Rommel is going to get whistled there. Harley playing good, strong defense against Browning, who is pretty tall. Harley's fairly tall. And twice she blocked. Shots to not allow Aubrey Ann Browning an easy layup. But the second time she committed the foul, and that'll send Browning to the line. 59% free throw shooter as she takes a look at it. And has it. Good. Well, she must have made. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't notice she made that shot, the second it shot. Okay, so Harley blocked one. The second one was made and the foul. Kat Ankeny with it. Bounce pass to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes bounces inside of Holland. Beautiful yes. pass. And Mads Holland's finished. Oh, that was a nice pass from Rhodes to Mads. I'd like to see and more Holland of that. And Holland put it away. That was gorgeous. Alberts to Browning. Far side. Wide open is a skew. Now around the perimeter they go. Alberts never oh, saw oh, a three oh. she didn't like, but missed this one. Rebound Browning. Kelly Walsh keeps it alive. There's a lot of steps there by Carruth, but her shot doesn't go. And Raina Rhodes picks up the rebound. Just over two to go in the half. Jackson down 30 to seven. Rhodes with it, watched by Carruth. Now to Naomi Roper. Ooh. Alberts on her. Roper back up to Kat Ankeny. Ankeny, near side elbow. As a shot from Mads Hollins. Oh. She was open for a second. No good. So close. Down with the board is number 12. Gives it over to Riley Alberts. Why can't those close ones drop in? Riley. Works to okay. Sydney Askew, top of the key to Aubrey Ann Browning. Her shot no good off the iron and big rebound there from Mads Holland doing her job. Raina Rhodes comes up court now. Looks around. Helper, helper, somebody is saying. Over to Mads Holland. Holland, little pump oh. fake. Now gives it to Raina Rhodes. Now out here to Zoe Bosch. Bosch holds up the number four and gets Naomi Roper cutting, but works it to Kat Ankeny. Ankeny with Browning on her. Ankeny looking, looking now, works it to Zoe Bosch back up top. This is what I mean, this offense just, I don't see anything happening. Naomi Roper, she'll try a shot, 18 footer, no good. Rebound 12 for Kelly Walsh, under a minute to go. Across the line is Riley Alberts. We need a picture of that scorebook now so I can see some names, maybe. Uh, I'll see if Grayson can do it. Alberts 
to Browning, whipping it around to 12. Now to Sydney Askew, just perimeter passing here as Kelly Walsh playing for a last shot, but there's a long way to go, 30 seconds. Nobody looks like they want to shoot for the Trojans. Inside to Browning on a triple team. Her shot is blocked by Mads Holland, but Mads almost had it stolen away. Now she steps out of bounds right in front of her oh, own bench, darn. I believe. Yeah, I, I might be a little hard. Like last night, I felt like the black was a part of the court. And so mm. getting used to, is the green the court or is it yeah, outside what, too? You know hard what I mean? To tell. It's so close. If you're watching with us on the live stream, yeah, what part of that court is out of bounds? Alberts works it to Askew. Long three. Good. Sydney Askew makes it 33-7. Time running down here. Jackson's got to hurry. Four. Three, let the crowd count it down. Shot from Harley Rommel is blocked, and now Carruth will launch one, but that's all over here for the half. At the half, Kelly Walsh, 33, Jackson, 7. We'll be back with the halftime stats. You're enjoying Bronx basketball at KC95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Hole. The Board Store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Gromont. Call 733-6000, 733 -6000. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn & Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareinns.com. here in Kelly Walsh, Casper, Wyoming, where, yeah, so far it's been all Lady, lady Trojans, 33-7. to 7. There have been times this season where the Lady Bronx have shown us glimpses of something pretty. I think this afternoon that Raina Rhodes passed inside of Bad Hollins and her finish, that was nice. That was nice. But the problem is 95% of it is not that pretty. In fact, it's pretty ugly. But they're getting better each and every game. This road trip, though, be one they like to forget so far. Let's uh, take a look at the stats. What do you got? Uh, some names with numbers or I don't know. Where do you want to start? Um, I'm a little short here on this side. Um, we can go ahead and start with Kelly Walsh. All right. Do we have a number 22? Yes. Okay, good. Vaughn Houston. I know her first name, Von Houston. Von Houghton. Von All Houghton. Right. Oh, sorry, I can't read. It's a little small. Von Houghton. Okay, we got her. Don't have a first name, but at least we have a name to 22. And do we have a name for the mysterious 12? Kroger. Kroger. J. Kroger. Whew. I feel much better. I was just about ready to just start making up names.
Kroger, Mysterious 12. All right, what do we have for numbers? Who's uh, doing the damage over there for Kelly Walsh? I know Riley Albers has got at least two threes, maybe three. What happened? Uh, she's got two threes right. and two from the line, so that's eight. Yep. Um, Caruth got two from the line. Uh, Lors, 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 Lorsero, two. Yeah. Um, what's Lauren, what's the number 11's last name? I can't read it on here. Uh, Lauren Laami. Laami La has two. She looks like a legitimate Hawaiian. Oh, uh, um, Sydney Askew actually has nine points. She's had three a good threes. game. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's had a, a skew averages 10 a game, the senior to lead this team in scoring. So that's not a surprise. Okay. Uh, Browning has eight. Yeah, she averages five a game. So eight already over her usual. She's had a real good game as well. And Von Hutton too. Okay. Well, and also, I want to give kudos and perhaps the player. It wouldn't be a player of the game, but it would be an MVP of the game to coach uh, Kayla Gilliam, who has worked in literally, I'm going to count them up, but I swear 15 girls have touched the basketball. I'm here. Uh, I what do you got? Let's tell over here. Lady Bronx. Um, Lady Bronx, well, I got to say, out of our seven points, five have been scored from the free throw line. How's that? Um, Naomi Roper has two. Uh, Zoe Bosch has one. Uh, Sierra Johnson has two. And Mads Holland has two. But Mads is our only basket. Like, basket. From the field, from yeah. From the field. Everybody else has scored from the line. Interesting. Yeah, and the shots put up have just... I mean, a couple were close. A couple not. I don't know. It's uh, It's the usual thing for the Lady Bronx sitting at seven here at the half. And... It's tough. This is a game we thought they would be a little more competitive. Kelly Walsh, Lady Trojans, by the numbers, not one of the better teams in 4A in Wyoming. But, you know, here at home, they're going to play for their fans. And they they have size, and there's, there's no accounting for it on the Lady Bronx side. This game of basketball very much loves length and to be a tall player there's so many advantages to it you can out rebound you can get shots up and over your opponent and your arm length we talked about that with coach Shockley they just if you're taller your arms are longer you reach in there and steal the ball away it's just there's a lot of advantages to being tall in basketball we don't have to tell you that and the That's lady Trojans lady Trojans are taking advantage of all of those reasons to be tall. We'll be right back with one more break. It's halftime right now in Kelly Walls. Boys coming up after this one in a big, big game for them. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it and he caught it and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Backcourt.
Northside Kelly Walsh High School Trojans have led this one all the way fairly easily, 33 to seven at the half. This game brought to you in part by Young Life Jackson Hall. Teens in Jackson searching for purpose, meaning, and real friendships. And that's where Young Life steps in the gap. Yes, they do. Well, I don't know. These uh, We talked about perhaps Kelly Walsh getting tired. This is their third consecutive game. They played Thursday night. They played Friday night. And here they are playing Saturday. But here's the deal. They haven't looked tired, and that's because they play so many girls. I did count it up. 14 girls have played for Kelly Walsh oh. in this game. I got 11 on our scoreboard. I've got 14 have been on the floor. Yes. 14. 11. And for Coach Sean Shockley, he does not have that deep of a bench at all. So the team is going to get tired. Might be Jackson, not Kelly Walsh. Well, and maybe, you know, we're thinking this is their third game in a row, but instead of getting tired, you're just getting more pumped and more energy after you play every game. That's the way you get it figured, huh? Well, I'm thinking that, you know, you get physical exercise out there. I mean, they're gonna crash later tonight, I'm not gonna lie there. Both teams back on the floor to start this second half. We'll switch sides, Jackson moving left to right and the road grays. And Kelly Walsh moving right to left in their home white, trimmed in green. It'll be Davila inbounds to Riley Albert, starting five out there for Kelly Walsh. Same for Jackson. Pass inside of Carruth. Carruth lost a handle for a moment, and yeah, steal. Mads Hollins got it, scooped it to Sierra Johnson, and Jackson gets the turnover as Carruth a little reckless with the ball. Jackson ball, Sierra Johnson, nice bounce pass to Zoe Bosch, who just materialized on the baseline. Bosch is left-handed runner, no good. And the rebound, Riley Alberts. Alberts has it now for the Lady Trojans. Lucy Webb tried to kick it away from her, it looked like. Inside pass to Carruth, up and in. And Peyton Carruth, pretty strong down low post move. She's Pretty good at that, 35-7. Zoe Bosch with it for Jackson. And out of bounds. Uh, 15 tried to steal it, yeah. went out of bounds. Jackson ball, it's Lucy Webb with Carruth on her. Now to Naomi Roper here at the near elbow. Back to Webb. Lucy gets... Zoe Bosch moving into the paint, but it's baseline Roper who picks up the pass. Now Sierra Johnson oh. with an open look, but just did miss the shot. Good ball movement by Jackson and a good shot by Johnson, but she couldn't make it go. And now a pass to Tedford Davila is out of bounds. Giveaway there by Kelly Walsh. Jackson will get it back. And the Jackson girls to me look tired. Webb looks tired. Hands on hips, they look a little gassed. Zoe Bosch over the line. We just started the second half, so we had 17 more minutes, girls. Sierra Johnson looking around, and Bosch hits the deck. She collided there with Browning. She gets right back up. Sierra Johnson to Naomi Roper. Roper in the corner now works her way to the free throw line. And back to Sierra Johnson. Nice move down the baseline. She'll try the shot there. And I like that. Sierra Johnson dribbling, driving, and getting the shot. She doesn't do enough of that. I liked it. The payoff wasn't there, though. The shot was missed. Carruth works it to Riley Alberts. Alberts into the paint, kicks it all the way cross court. There's a baseline three from Davila. Good, and good ball movement there by the Lady Trojans. 38 to seven as Davila drains the triple. Zoe Bosch up across the line. Takes a look at the movement. Much better moving without the ball for the Lady Bronx. Pass inside and Tedder for Holland, tipped away and stolen by Kelly Walsh. Not a bad idea, but Holland wasn't terribly open. Pass wasn't perfect. 
Develet to Albert's long three. She's been good at these, but she's too short with that. Naomi Roper tracks down the rebound for the Bronx. Zoe Bosch patiently up court. Got Davila on her, picks up her dribble. Davila swiping at the ball. Bosch now fires over to Mads Holland right in front of Coach Shockley, who's barking something into Holland's ear. Her pass picked off. Mads Holland stolen by Carruth up ahead to Alberts and in. Riley Alberts off the steal by Carruth. And Mads Holland's passing has been sketch a little bit this year. And now a whistle time out on the floor. Who took that? We'll go as well. Time out on the floor with 4.44 yes. to play. It's the Trojans 40, the Lady Bronx 7. You're enjoying Bronx basketball and Jackson Hole Radio Network. At High Country Linens, paper. live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Bronx basketball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 2020, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, and Entertainment, bars, and breweries live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn coming this May. Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KZ95. KZ95, Jackson All Radio, Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K bringing you all the action from Casper, Wyoming, Kelly Walsh against the Jackson Lady Bronx. Bronx have it now, Zoe Bosch with it. Triggers far side of Holland, bounce pass to Webb. Her turnaround jumper, no good. And down with the board is Sydney Eskew for Kelly Walsh. Good idea there by Jackson. I love the movement, the ball movement. Everything worked except for the shot. That's coming, I would think. Riley Alberts drives the lane. Her shot goes up on the top of the backboard. That's out of bounds. And it'll be Jackson ball. Bosch with it for Jackson. Just over four to go here in the third. Nice drive there by Sierra Johnson. Turns around, gives it to Webb. Lucy Webb gets a nice pick from Holland. Now her pass stolen away by Peyton Carruth, who works it far side of Kroger, and she took Ooh. steps. Sorry, that's not Kroger. That's Von Houten, who's had a lot of playing time for somebody who's not on anyone's roster. She might have come up from the JV team. Here's Bosch with it now for Jackson. Trailing 40 to seven here in the third quarter. Lucy Webb, good move. Got a pick from Sierra Johnson. Now pulls up her dribble. She's in a little trouble here. Got to have somebody to pass to. Finally gets it to Zoe Bosch. Seems Zoe makes herself available whenever someone's in trouble. Her and Rhodes are pretty good at that. Now Zoe's tied up with Von Houten. Stolen away by Eskew. Uh, and a... Uh, timeout. Two girls dive for the ball. A good job by Coach Gilliam over there on the... Kelly Walsh in to save what should have been a travel or at least a jump ball. She calls a well-timed timeout. <laughs> Kelly Walsh breaks the huddle on the far side. 3.28 to go on the third. And Jackson girls have just been overwhelmed from the get-go. An 8-0 start for Kelly Walsh, and Jackson just never really has gotten back in this. And as you pointed out, Cammy, just one basket from the floor was Mads Hollins. The rest of the points coming from the stripe. It's been that kind of morning afternoon. I don't know how many are close. I just want to see those drop in. Von Houten inbounds to Riley Alberts. Alberts <coughs> floats one to Van Houten. She'll try a three from the baseline. Too short off the iron. Rebound Webb, and that goes off her. And Lucy looks tired to me. Webb had the rebound and just let it trickle out of her hands, off her foot and out of bounds. And her expression after that happened was one of dejection and utter fatigue. Askew works it inside, now kicks it back out. 
It's Askew, top of the key. Raina Rhodes on her. Sydney Askew drives the right block, puts one up and in. That was a nice drive there. <clears throat> And she lays it up and in, just under three to go. Lucy Webb with it now. Webb pulls up the dribble, wants Roper, gets her. Naomi Roper with it at the near elbow. Naomi looks around now, will dribble to the top of the circle. Askew following her closely, pokes at it, knocks it free for a moment, but Roper gets it back. Good senior patience here from Naomi Roper, who now works it to Mads Holland. Holland watched closely by Senna Curry. Pass it, tenner for Rhodes, out of bounds. Mads Holland's passing. Uh, we've said it, Mads. That pass missed Rhodes. It was behind her and out of bounds. Riley Alberts with it now, far side. There's Askew, tries one, good. And Sydney Askew with a three-pointer from the elbow makes it 45-7. Rhodes brings it up now for the Lady Bronx. Reyna looking around and poked in there. That's going to be a foul on Von Houten who reached in. She picks up her third, I believe. Fourth. Fourth, yeah, she's... Now that we've identified who she is. She's going to fall out. We were blaming things on poor Maddie Bullard, but yeah, she's going to check out now, replaced by Kennedy Devilla. Lucy Webb gets a break. Maybe Coach Shockley noticed she looks a little worn down. Here's Zoe Bosch with it. Uh, yeah, she's going to get a palm of the ball, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe. It kind of was behind her. Well, you kind of got to let them play. You got a 45-7 to seven game. Let them play a little bit. I mean, yeah, a little bit of a carry there by Jackson. Askew with it now for Kelly Walsh. Bounce pass inside. Curry now back out to Askew. Works it. Baseline jumper. No good by Kennedy Devilla. And a battle for the rebound. That's a whistle on the Trojans. Jackson ball. That's going to be a foul on 33. Ooh. All right. Kendall Allaire picks up the hurt there. Just the uh, second foul for the Trojans. Bronx have not committed a foul in this half. Sierra Johnson with it. Looking around, top of the key down to Rhodes. Rhodes lost the handle for a moment, gets it back, works it over to Zoe Bosch, watched by Albert. Zoe walks it to the top of the circle. Now to Reyna Rhodes. Rhodes to Allison Burcham. Pump fake. Nobody bought it. And now around the horn. And, oh, knocked out of bounds. Zoe Bosch took a hand to the head there. And did they see that? No. No call. She got swiped in the head. And the ball knocked out. But it'll be Jackson ball here. Bosch inbounds to Rhodes. Whistle away from the play. And who's this on? Uh, Rommel. Hmm, Maybe? Von Houten. Oh, no. Did they get her for her fourth? I swore he put up 2-2. Two, two. So did I, but we don't have a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I don't Sienna's even know. Sienna's out there. Sienna's out there. Sierra, I mean. Sierra Johnson will get it. Okay. Curry works it inside to Alaire. Her shot no good. Oh. Rebound by Curry. And Ooh, Kelly Bosch Walsh will get another. Look at this, and Riley Alberts with it now, and a whistle away, and yeah, that was Bosch who she took another shot time. to the yeah. face. Zoe is, what do you say, 5'5", five, five maybe? She plays a lot, obviously, huh. as a guard, she plays a lot on the perimeter, but she'll get in there in the paint, and that's where she was when she took a shot to the nose. Lucy Webb will come in for her. And now it'll be Kennedy Devilla triggering in. Works it to Von Houten. Von Houten pulls up a dribble, gives it to Curry. Back to Von Houten around the horn. Devilla will try. Good. That's a three. Kennedy Devilla, the sophomore, averaging four points a game. And she's done better than that so far this afternoon. Webb with it down for Jackson. Down to 25 seconds to go in the third. And another whistle. And I just 
Don't know what that was. Clock's still running. Are that's what they're doing, running clock, 48 to 7? Yeah. yeah, I told you it's got to be Webb with it now. <laughs> Lucy Webb gets away from Albers for a minute. Time ticking down. Rhodes thought about her shot. Now she will take uh. it, and it's just short. Uh, that's how the third quarter will end. So after three, it's Kelly Walsh, 48, Jackson, seven. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. In case you haven't heard, Healing Waters is offering a machine that can penetrate deep into your muscle fiber to increase your strength. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Back to basketball. It's been all Kelly Walsh so far. Jackson still looking for their first points of the second half. Zoe Bosch will trigger in right here in front of you on the bottom of your camera. Into Webb, who hands it back to Zoe. Zoe across the line as the fourth quarter just underway here in Casper. Mads Hollins with it far side. Pass looking for Ho Zoe. Yes. And that's up and in. And that time, Holland was able to get it to Zoe Bosch. Good pass, and Zoe finished. Jackson has their first, first points of the second half. Shot there by Kennedy DeVilla off the front of the iron. No good. Battle for the rebound brings another whistle. And this has become a choppy affair here in the second half. Very little flow with all these whistles. Yeah, so definitely over the back. Matt Holland got the rebound in number 11. Lauren Lamy will pick up the over the back foul. Yep. Zoe Bosch with it now for Jackson. Gets it to Mads Hollins. Lost the handle for a moment and out of bounds. But, ooh, they're going to say Lamy knocked it out. Lauren Lamy, Liami, last to touch. No, no, they won't. Never mind. One official overruled by the other. Now they're going to talk it over. And the official who I was watching call it says, uh uh. We're going to go with my call, and it will be Jackson Ball. Yeah, Zoe right. Bosch. Bosch looks around. He's got Lucy Webb, doesn't see her. Bounce pass looking for Holland. That never got there. Stolen away by Kroger. Kroger bounce pass looking for Alaire. That one went off of Alaire, and now a tie up. Lucy Webb on the far side there, right in front of the Trojan bench. And a jump ball with Peyton Hill, and the arrow is in Kelly Walsh's favor. Hill will inbounds here. Zoe Bosch guarding her. Hill looking around. Can't find anybody. Now launches one way up top of the key to Kennedy Davila. Her shot gone. <laughs> Kennedy Davila makes it 50 to 9. Just under six to go in the fourth. Bosch for Jackson. Zoe works it to Sierra Johnson. Sierra, nice float pass there to yes. Holland. Her shot oh. off the glass, too strong. Good idea, beautiful pass from Johnson to Holland. Mads put it right up and just a little strong. Kelly Walsh with it now. It's Alaire down low on the post. Her shot no good, and Mads Hollins with the board. Here comes Zoe Bosch pushing the pace. A little bit out of control there, and she's going to get another palming the ball as she was dribbling it up over her head a little bit. All right, I'll buy that call. Not the first one, but I'll take that one. Peyton Hill works it into Davila. Kennedy Davila, the sophomore. A lot of poise for an underclassman in this Davila girl. And her drive there, lost the handle, went right to Rihanna Rhodes. And Raina Rhodes says, I'll take that. Rhodes brings it up, guarded closely by Curry. Or rather, Kroger, sorry. That's Mads Hollins working on Liami. Good job by Holland to back her up to the 
Rack, and now gives it to Webb. Back to Rhodes. Raina Rhodes at the top of the key. She's going to try a drive down the right block, and she gets upended. Kennedy Davila reached in, and I think she might be the guilty one. Uh, Maybe. She reached in, but the block actually came from... 12. Kroger. Kroger. Liami checks out. Into the game is Sina, Sena Curry. Jackson inbounds, a whistle, and a timeout. Time so Jackson. with 4.18 to go in the fourth, it's the Lady Bronx 50, the Lady Trojans 9. Boys coming up next, if you were not with us last night, the Jackson Bronx lost one to the Rock Springs Tigers. Tigers are a legit good team, but still a team that is in that window where you think Jackson should be able to get a road win over Rock Springs if Jackson plays one of their better games. The problem is Jackson did not. They played a good first half. Yep. They really... They frustrated Rock Springs with a 2-3 zone, which Jackson does not employ very often. The trouble is that Bronx just never got the shooting going. They never got 12 for the whole second half. Yeah, just couldn't score. That second half was dreadful. Bosch inbounds to Holland. She'll try a shot. That's just short. Might have been partially blocked by Curry. And Kelly Walsh with it now. Davila brings it up. Kennedy Davila is the future of your backcourt here if you're a Kelly Walsh fan. She triggers one over here to Kroger. She'll try a long 20-footer. No good. Gets her own rebound. Kicks it out. And Allaire finishes that. Kendall Allaire puts it up and in to make it 52-9. to Bosch with the ball now. Jackson just doesn't have too deep of a bench when you're playing back-to-back -back games on the road. It's tough. Bosch's pass is picked off. Never got to its intended target. It was Senna Curry who took that one away. And Devilla has it now for the Trojans. Kennedy Devilla works it to Curry. Now far side. Peyton Hill, so many new faces in there, up and in. Nice ball movement, and Senna Curry, the senior, finishes. They have a football worth roster of players on this Kelly Walls team, I'm telling you. I can't even keep track of them. There's so many of them over there, and they all play. Look at, they're all, get a shot of that bench. None of them have their warm-up togs on. Now, you got one girl that uh, Kira Lucero is out with an injury, and she's got her left ankle taped up. All the rest of them have been in the game and seen significant time. Davila, Alberts, Curry, Carruth, Lucero, Liami, Kroger, Cardenas, Eskew, Browning, Van Houten, Hill, and Allaire. That's 13 that have played significant time. And by the time we're done, they'll all have points. I'm just pointing out how difficult it is for an announcer to keep up with all these players, especially when three of them weren't even on my roster to start with. Hey, come on. And for the Jackson Lady Bronx, limited options for Coach Shockley in a team that is starting to show a little wear and tear. They're a little bit tired. They got Ankeny out there now with Bertram and Rommel, so it's good to see those bench players out there. See if they can make some magic happen. Zoe Bosch has it now working on Davila. Zoe has Roper just running back and forth across the baseline. Long shot from Rommel. No good. Too short. And rebound Kelly Walsh. Davila brings it up for these Lady Trojans. Davila, far side elbow, looking around, watched by Rommel. Nice inside pass to Allaire. She posts up, her shot no good, and she reached over the top there, tapped it out of bounds, Jackson Ball. Unless they're going to whistle, they are going to give her a foul on that. That's Kelly Walsh's sixth foul of the half, just one for Jackson. Bosch with it now. 2.25 to go in the fourth, running clock. Jackson down 54 to 9. 
Bosch again. Roper is just, oh, that pass stolen away up and in for Kroger. Yeah. Jay Kroger, the junior, just stole that away and goes in with an easy layup. I'm watching Naomi Roper just run baseline back and forth. She's just run a three basketball games worth of baseline moves. That pass tipped and stolen. Another unforced error there and careless passing by the Lady Bronx gives Kelly Walsh the ball again. Kennedy Devella inside pass to Curry now kicked out far side. Kroger posts up her shot too short. Rebound fought for battle and Kroger is going to come up with it. Out wrestled Bircham for it. Devilla will try a three. That's off the back of the iron. No good. Alaire with a nice rebound. Kicks it out to Kroger. Kelly Walsh will get a third look at the buck bucket here. Alaire bounce pass inside to Curry. She didn't like the crowd and works it out to Kroger. She'll try a long three. That's off the back of the iron. No good. Rommel with the rebound. And finally, the Lady Bronx come up with a basketball. The band is excited about something. I didn't see what happened. I think they're just trying to make some noise. Oh, wow. Bertram with a shot top of the key. Oh. That's off the mark and out of bounds. Allison Bertram with a shot there. Just under a minute to go. And Lamy, Lauren Liami will check in for... The Lady Trojans, Bosch gets a much needed rest for Jackson. Rhodes will replace her. And here comes Kelly Walsh. They have a 56-9 lead with time ticking and probably not in a hurry to do much here. Davila gets a pick from Alaire. Now kicks it to Liami and she took steps. Yeah, she, she got caught, she, she knew it, yeah. <laughs> Lauren Liami with the travel. The senior turns it over. Jackson Paul, they'll have to hurry here for a last shot. Down to 21 seconds to go in the game. Rhodes with it far side. She beats a double team and kicks it over to Naomi Roper. Roper with it. Drives the lane a little bit. Now turns around and backs out. Uh -oh. Naomi Roper, careful dribbling here. Reaching in, though, and swatting it was Peyton Hill. Time ticking, Raina Rhodes with it. She lost the handle, stolen away by Peyton Hill, and she'll just hang on to the ball and let time run out. So, this one a final. The Kelly Walsh Lady Trojans 56, the Jackson Lady Bronx 9. We'll be back to wrap things up. Take a look at the stats in the post-game show. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Bronx basketball Ball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 20, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, entertainment, bars, and breweries. Live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn, coming this May. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt, Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000. 733-6000. Back here, Casper, Wyoming. Kelly Walsh High School with the Lady Trojans have secured a victory. Their third game in as many days. And for Kelly Walsh with this win, they improved their overall record to 3-13. and And snap a four-game losing streak. So congrats to the Lady Trojans and for the Jackson Old Lady Bronx still searching for that first win of the year. Their overall record now, 0-17. They just play so hard on the floor there. They play hard. They keep they play coming. Hard. Look at these uh, final stats to you. I, boy, I really... Trying to think of, uh, for the Lady Bronx, I again admire the game that, that Bosch and Rhodes brings every time out there. 
I might be inclined to signal Sierra Johnson today for my fave player, but we'll see. You got stats? What do you got there? Got Let's uh, start with the Lady Trojans. What Kelly Walsh do? All right. Let's go with Davila had... Oh, wait. Yeah, Davila had... Eight. Kennedy Davila, the sophomore, who averages four a game, picked up eight, doubled up on her usual. Uh, Albert's 10. Albert's had a, a good game, did a lot of damage from the triple, yeah. Curry, two. Yep. Carruth, four. Uh, Lacero, two. Uh, how did... A lot. Lauren Liami. Liami, two. Um, Kroger, four. Askew, 14. Yeah, she averages 10 a game. She had a big night against Star Valley last night. Good for her. Cindy um, Askew. Browning, eight. And Von Hooten, two. All right. So you want to. Everyone scored. Yeah, I, I tell you, a lot of players played. Who's your uh, favorite over there for the Lady Trojans? I got to go with Skew. Sydney. You like his Skew? I, I'm going to say Kennedy Devella, the sophomore maybe, and or maybe the coach, Kayla Gilliam. I like the way she, you know, playing the Lady Bronx up a bunch. She got everybody involved and really played her entire bench over on the Lady Bronx side of things. Same as before, Naomi Roper, two from the line. Zoe Bosch, one from the line, two from the field. Um, Johnson, two from the line. And Mandis Holland, two from the field. I'll tell you why I like Sierra Johnson. Number one, she was two for two from the free throw line, and that's a 33% free throw shooter. So she's showing me improvement. She did something she's statistically not supposed to do and also my big thing on Sierra is she needs to dribble more she's a good athlete and a good basketball player I'd like to see her take command and take charge and dribble more and I thought she did that more this afternoon so I, I want I like Johnson who do you like well I'm gonna say I'm a little impartial and you know that but I'm gonna go with the two shots that were scored from the floor one was a Mads, Mads Holland Mads because Holland. you got a pass and the other one was because of her pass yeah to, so my that I, I I'm gonna say Mads but I am a little partial yeah Mads, I a little am Mads had I a strong she, game she would have been my close second yeah yeah but her and Sierra do play similar games I just yeah. I would have to go more Mads yeah just because of the two baskets scored. Yeah. She was a part of both of those today. They play a tough, tough game. Zoe, hope you're okay. She got all smashed. Oh, <laughs> yes, she did. That Zoe is going to say, you know, maybe basketball is not my thing. It's and been you're a wondering, I just got to say, where trip. were the fouls there? Because those are pretty obvious. She was smacked in the face. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> the told you. The ball went out, but she was smacked in we, the face. We said before going into this one that the girls would have to deal with Kelly Wall's size and physicality. I've watched this lady Trojan team on film and they are tough and when you say oh. their height there it was very obvious our yeah uh, our girls were tired at the second half and uh, how do you not get tired when you just see a team that you know doesn't shoot very well but yet all of a sudden is picking up their pace yeah. and shooting on you and you're 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 throwing it towards that basket and it's just not going whoosh you know I, what I'm saying? I thought, I, yeah, I get know. A I, I, I mean, thought I, we'd have a little more for Kelly Walsh. This is not one of the better teams in the 4A. You're getting them on their third straight game, so you maybe we're hoping they'd be a little bit tired. Uh, I just expected more from Jackson. I thought we'd have more for him, but it really didn't. And it's just tough when you get out of the gate slow yeah. and, and you're Jackson. It's tough to catch up. It's better to get out fast. Like, Lady Bronx got out fast against Riverton, and right. for that first quarter, you thought, hey, who oh, are these girls? Man, if they would have played against Riverton, because yeah. they just, they, they were making the shots from the thing, but it's, they weren't going in, and, yeah. but the Trojans, I mean, Kelly Wash was making almost everything they shot in that first half, and that just... Jackson girls oh, just are not heavy. the kind of team that can overcome a slow start. They just aren't, um, they're so young, they're just so. never there. All right, we'll get, uh, we'll wrap things up with the girls, and we'll reset the scene here for the boys ready to go here in just just a moment. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. 
Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, throws it out of the and the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes it out. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh... So is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back to the action here at Kelly Walsh High School. Tonight's action, or this afternoon's action, brought to you in part by the McPeak Group. With more than five decades combined experience in the Valley, the McPeak Group at Jackson Hole Sotheby's International Realty has been helping buyers and sellers across the spectrum of the region real estate landscape. Make sure you get a pro in your corner. Take a look at these. Uh, this game now, the boys, both boys out here for the Jackson Bronx, obviously, they got to turn things around. They're in uh, trending in the wrong direction, a three-game losing streak. Now for Jackson after the loss last night in Rock Springs. This team is now 10-6 and six overall, 3-2 and two in conference, and still 3-0 and oh in quadrant, which is – going to be crucial. We talked a little bit about it in the girls pregame how still the Jackson Bronx are still situated in a pretty good position. It's going to be Star Valley and them when it comes down to who's going to win the Southwest. Jackson right now holds the advantage in the head-to-head -head matchup. Now depending on what happens when Jackson goes down to Afton and play Star Valley, let's say Star Valley wins. Both these teams end with an equal quadrant conference record. Then it would go down to tiebreakers, common opponents, and Star Valley is doing the same road trip Jackson's doing in reverse fashion. So they're playing Rock Springs now. Star Valley lost to Kelly Walsh last night on this court. So how key is this game for Jackson? If they should beat Kelly Walsh, they'd hold that advantage at least over the Braves. So an important, important game in that respect as we look at post-season post, uh, seeding and an important game in just the mindset of the boys who really, uh, before these losses start getting in your head and you get down on yourself, you've got to come out firing in this one and try to put some of these losses behind you and get back in the win column. It won't be easy against these Kelly Walls Trojans. The record, don't let it fool you. They're six and 10 overall under head coach Randy Roden. 0 and 3 in conference. They're on a one game win streak. That win came last night at Star Valley when you had four different players, I believe, or three different players, four different players for uh, the Trojans who had double figures. They can get scoring from anywhere. They got a lot of, a lot of weapons. Uh, so that's a coming off the win. They did lose to Rock Springs on Thursday. These uh, Trojans, like the girls, are also playing their third straight game. They played Thursday night, Friday night, and again this afternoon. Offensively, the Trojans are about uh, middle of the pack with averaging 56 points a game. From the floor, they shoot about 41%. Again, that's uh, just kind of meh. 
32% shooters from three. That's decent, not great. Defensively, not super good either. They give up about 56 points a game, and they don't rebound terribly well either. Uh, none of the stats really jump out at you when you look at Kelly Walsh, but they're here on their home floor. They're riding high off, over that big win last night. So it's a team you got to be careful with for the Jackson Bronx offensively. 61 points a game ranks number five. They shoot it about 42.5% from the field. That ranks them number six. Not shooting the triple very well, and it was almost non-existent last night. Defensively, yeah, Jackson's very good defense and very good rebounding. One thing that you'll have to watch this afternoon is how Jackson handles that 2 3 zone. Sometimes a, a 1 1 3 zone, they'll switch it up, but pretty much Kelly Walsh is going to zone you up all game long. And what that does is invites you to shoot from distance. So Jackson's going to get this open invitation to go shoot threes. Who wants to be the guy to answer to RSVP that invitation? Is it going to be Seb? Is it going to be Mac Fairbairn? Is A.J. Fowler going to get hot again like he was last year? Is it going to be Carson Harlan or Isaac Larson? Somebody. I think the guard play today is going to be the difference. Somebody in the Bronx has got to hit shots from beyond the arc. That's going to be crucial. Seb Runner has got to take care of the basketball. Isaac Larson, Carson Harlan have to take care care of the basketball because I watched this Kelly Walls team on film. They love to double team trap you anywhere and everywhere out if you're a guard. So if you think, you know how many times in basketball do you see the guard just kind of he holds up yeah, his hand, he calls a play, yeah, he's out basket, at the yeah. Kelly Walsh will not allow you that kind of time. They will come out and get you and harass you with two players. They won't let you just dribble around even though you're far from the basket and just, uh, you know, kind of watch things weave around. They will come and get you. So you better be ready. Get the ball out of your hands. Somebody is open in this zone, and you got to find the soft spots. Here's what Coach Hayden Hatfield had to say about this Kelly Walsh team. They're very young, pretty big, and that zone, I'm telling you, is something. They're a young squad. They're huge, um, really long. They'll play a zone most of the game, um, but they're big, and they're young. Um, they got a freshman start and then two sophomores at least. It depends on I, they might have another sophomore or two. So um, really good squad, very inexperienced, but they got the ability to come out and play really well. So uh, that's not a game to take lightly either. I mean, like I was telling somebody the other day, like 4A this year in the West, there's not an easy game. Everyone's really, really good. Like the West is making a point this year. I think that we might, you know, square up with the East pretty well when we get down to it. So um, Kelly Walsh should be really tough. They'll zone us, like I said. But being on the road, hopefully we can shoot it well, be ready to go. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're that big. Um, they're definitely young. They're not real huge to me. They got two kids, 6'4", that will see plenty of playing time. Connor Degel and Isaac Mamet both go 6'4". After that, uh, it's just 6'2 and 6'1". I guess what Coach Hatfield's talking about is everyone on this team is more than six feet tall. Like, 6'1", six, 6'2", six, 6'4", six, six, they're all got good size, but nobody is huge like Andrew that, Hanna, huge. Yeah, I know. I'm looking out there, and I mean, I know I'm not seeing yeah, I, I, like a great amount of height standing there. But they're definitely young. Um, you're going to see three brothers, Jack Nichols and Jace Nichols, the two sophomore twins, joined by older brother, senior Jaden Nichols. So on the floor, we expect to see three Nichols starting. One is a senior, two are sophomores. We'll see a freshman who may take this game over, Mason Eager. He's only a freshman, but he leads this team in scoring with 14.7 points a game. He is tough to handle and we'll, we'll have to see who the assignment falls to to take care of him but they have some weapons and uh, that Isaac Mamet is their, their big guy, their senior so they're pretty young uh, have good overall size but they don't shoot it terribly well so I don't, it could be a low scoring game, we'll see keys to the game, yeah let's do that here's what I have for keys to the game and I still have the girls up so let me 
fix that for you. Keys to the game, handle that zone trap. And I just talked about okay. it, you know, whether it's Seb or Isaac or Carson, whoever the uh, point guard is who's handling the ball, be prepared for two guys to come racing right out to you yeah. because they'll come and trap you. You got to get rid of the ball when that happens. How about getting rid of it before it happens? Yeah. <laughs> I also put uh, cross court passes. I think that's the way to break this zone is you'll watch uh, this team's young. So what they'll do with the zone is if the ball's on the near side, they'll all collapse over here to the near side. They'll leave somebody back door. That back door guy is going to be open. Make cross court passes. And that's one way to beat the zone. The other way is to find the soft spots, find the soft spot in the zone. If they're going to come way out and get you, if you're Seb Brunner and you're way out here on the Trojan well, here, I'll get a shot of the live screen. If you're sub and you're way out there on the emblem of the Trojan guy and you got two players that are come out and mess with you. you someone's open. Somebody is open in that zone. Find that soft spot. And they got to make better passes than they did last night. Oh, yeah. That first half was a little sloppy. Well, they got to make passes. better shots and better passes than they did. They got to do everything better than they did last night. Um, that's for sure. Let's let the boys introduce you. Uh, introduce themselves. That's brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hole. Seth Runner, junior. Mac Fairbairn, senior. AJ Fowler, junior. Owen Connor, junior. Uh, Carson Harlan, senior. Isaac Larson, senior. Paul Marcel, sophomore. Andrew Hamm, junior. Gavin Kilo, junior. Christian Mack, senior. Drew Rebel, senior. Chris Woodray, Player introductions brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hole. Find out more. Young Life accepting teens for who they are. No strings attached and sponsoring. Now look at your starting lineups who we're about to get to you in a couple of minutes. We're about two minutes away from tap time. We'll take one more quick break. And when we come back, we'll get this one going as Jackson visits Kelly Walsh. Trying to snap a three-game losing streak. You're enjoying Brox basketball on Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the Town Square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Your home for Jackson Hole High School sports is KZ95. Let's get back to the game. Back court side as we get ready to get going. Waiting for the starting lineups. Presentation of the colors as we'll have a national anthem and all that stuff and get this game rolling to you. Both these teams, as we said, coming in should be tired. Kelly Walsh at least got to game sleep three. in their own beds, but their third game in a row. Jackson on a long road trip, as Coach Hayden Hadfield referred to it, a tour to Wyoming as they were in Rock Springs last night. That's a three-and-a-half-hour trip there and another three-and-a-half to Casper where they spent the night in our hotel where we stayed. And they must have been to bed because it was an awfully quiet hotel They were up all night, night goofing around. <laughs> <laughs> they were not. <laughs> I don't know. You saw them this morning. Uh, let's take you uh, courtside for the presentation of the colors and get things rolling here at Kelly Walsh High School.
All right. Nice pregame here at Kelly Walsh. I like it. Very ROTC nice. presenting the colors. You don't see that enough. <laughs> and we're about ready to go as we'll get the starting lineups to you. Big, big game for the Jackson Bronx. Boy, do they need this. We need a win. Schedule doesn't get any easier. Things just get harder. Jackson's going to, as we said, become a bit of road warriors as they'll finish the season with four of five games on the road. to go here is trying to see who might be in our starting lineup for the Jackson Bronx. They're wearing their road blacks trimmed in orange and grayish. Seb Brunner gets the call in the backcourt. We said it'd be crucial against this zone defense to hit shots from distance. Isaac, Isaac Larson. Larson will join him. Those are two guys that certainly can do it. Palmer Wetzel playing that swing along with Gavin Keelan. They're both kind of doing that forward guard thing, swing thing. Uh, Hannah and Keelan, the other two. So Brunner, Larson, Wetzel, Hannah, and Keelan for the hometown Trojans. We expect to see the three Nichols brothers joined by Jack. Jack Nichols, the sophomore. Mason Eager, like you said. Mason Eager leading this team and scoring with nearly 15 a game. Jaden Nichols. Jaden Nichols, the senior Nichols brother, averaging eight and a half. Jace. Jace, the other sophomore at 6-1. And Mamet, like you said. And Isaac Mamet, the top rebounder on the team. He also kicks in 10 points again. So, yeah, pretty good size. Very athletic. Uh, the three Nichols brothers are very athletic. So is Mason Eager. Um, just a super athletic team. You really... You can't outrun them. They get up and down the court well. How well can they defend 6'7", Andrew Hanna? And how much can they challenge the outside shot if Jackson chooses to try to throw threes? And they're not even going to try to challenge Hanna on the tap as Jace Nichols just backs out and gives it to Andrew Hanna. Jackson ball to start. Isaac Larson with it. Bounce pass to Keelan. Thought about Ooh. Brunner, but he won't do it. And this is how the they will trap you. Isaac Larson gets in trouble here, but works it cross court. Wetzel Brunner inside to Hannah. He's wide open, up and in. Seb Brunner found Andrew Hanna down low. And so far, that's another way to beat the zone with nice yeah. quick seam passing. Baseline three here is good from Jaden Nichols. And Kelly Walsh answers with the tray. It's 3-2. You could probably just use Trojans. first name since everyone out there is Nichols. Whipped across court. Palmer Wetzel now to Seb Brunner. And there's that double team. He doesn't worry about it, though. Gets it over to Keelan. Now to Isaac Larson. Larson to Keelan. Keelan will try a long three, top of the key, oh. just short. Rebound Hannah, but he gets it pulled away from him. Now Wetzel's tied up with Isaac Mamet, and that'll be a jump ball. Good job by Wetzel to keep it alive. Hannah had the rebound, lost it, and then Wetzel grabbed the loose change and at least flips the arrow here. We're a minute in, 3-2, Kelly Walsh. Mamet tries a long three. That's good. Isaac Mamet, that's not normally his deal, but two threes now have given the Trojans a 6-2 lead. Keelan, bounce pass to Brunner. Brunner back to Gavin Keelan. 
Back to Brunner to Keela. Keela's playing a lot out up high here, and I think that's an acknowledgement that they come out to trap you. And now a pass to Keelan off his hands out of bounds. I think I've never seen Gavin play this much out here with yeah. Brunner up high. And I think that's a way to deal with this double team trap of the guards that Kelly Walsh does. Here's Jace Nichols, works it far side to Eager. Mason Eager drives baseline up and in. And that is some athleticism from the freshman who is 6'2". That was a power move there. Here's Gavin Keelan to Seb Brunner. Seb Brunner works at far side. Iverson license stutter step. Now pump fake puts a man in the air. Gives it to Gavin Keelan. And the ball turned over. Loose ball. Up with it is Hannah. And Jackson saves it for a moment. Isaac Larson with it now to Gavin Keelan. Seb Brunner tries a lane. Kick out to Keelan. Over to Larson. He'll try a baseline three. The lefty gets a bounce off the rim. No good. And the rebound goes right to Jaden Nichols. He works it across court to Jace. Jace inside to brother Jack, and now finally out to Anon Nichols, and that's Isaac Mehmet. And Kelly Walsh has started this game hitting shots. Oh, boy. That might be trouble. Oh, just denied Hannah underneath. 5.15 to go in the opening frame. It's been all Kelly Walsh so far. Mehmet with it now. Top of the key to Jaden Nichols. Hands off to Eager, Mason Eager. Draws Isaac Larson out to him. He'll try a little baseline 12-footer. No good. Rebound Gavin Keelan. Bronx have a chance here to cut this lead a little bit with five minutes to go. They've dug themselves a nine-point hole. Keelan picks up a double team. He gets it over to Seb Bronner. Hannah working it quickly now. That's what you got to do. Palmer Wetzel baseline three. Good. Palmer Wetzel. Makes it 11 to four. Trojans with the ball now. It's Mason Eager between the legs dribble. Hands off to Jack Nichols. Nice spin move in the lane up and in. And he had Seb Runner turned all kinds of around. 13 to five, Kelly Walsh lead. Isaac Larson with it now. Out to Seb Runner. Brunner. They thought about coming to trap, and they're a little worried about trying to trap Seb. They come out to get Keelan, though. Double team trap. Keelan dribbles his way out of it, picks oh. up a triple team now, and coughs it up. Kelly Walsh with the ball. Nobody can pick it up. It's out of bounds. Jaden Nichols just could not pick it up. Gavin Keelan tried to dribble his way out of a double team, and all he got him was a triple team as he went right into Isaac Mamet and cough the ball up. You gotta be so very careful handling the ball as a guard. I see Hatfield, obviously the game plan is to have Keelan out with Sepp to give Sepp an outlet and someone to pass to. But so far, Gavin has let one pass get away from him out of bounds. And then in trying to dribble out of a double team, coughed it up there. So gotta be more careful with the ball handling. Keelan will inbounds right in front of the Kelly Walsh band. Jackson with 4.02 in the opening frame, down 13 to four. As the Trojans had jumped on him, shooting the ball pretty well. They shot pretty good last night too. Wetzel stutter step, pump fake, gets it into Andrew Hannett. Left hand lay in, no good. Hannett gets his own rebound and now draws the foul. It's gonna be Jack Nichols, his first team first. Three forty-eight to go. Thirteen four. Trojans. Brunner triggers into Hannah. Hannah cross court to Wetzel. Now to Gavin Keelan. Ball movement around the perimeter here. That's what the zone will give you. But sooner or later, somebody's got to shoot one. Isaac Larson wiggles free from Landon Pebble. Can't do anything with it. Wetzel cross court. Brunner. He's open for a moment. Doesn't take the shot. Wetzel. He'll drive the left block. His pass picked off. People got a hand on it, and it goes right to Jack Nichols. Over to people, over to Peppel. Landon Peppel brings it up to Jack Nichols. Now to Jace. Jace with the top of the key. Watch by Keelan. Jace Nichols to brother Jack. Jack puts a nice move on Brunner again. Drives baseline. Kick out. That's going to be far side. Jace Nichols shot left it short. Good rebound by Hannah as flying by was Connor Deggle. 
Right down the lane, Andrew Hannah puts it up and in. Good pass. Who made that pass? I didn't see, but uh, Hannah well. laid it right up and in. 2.50 to go, 13 to 6. Jackson just trying to hang with the Trojans as they're enjoying a hot start. Mason Eager with it now for KW. Gives it to Peppel. Landon Peppel drives hard on Larson. Bumps him with a shoulder. Now a shot far side. Caught. It's Connor Deggle. And everybody's had a hand on the scoring for Kelly Walsh, kind of like last night. Seth Brunner with it. Drives. Kick out Keelan. His pass knocked out of bounds by Peppel. The 6-2 senior for the Trojans. It'll remain Jackson Ball. First substitutions of the game involve Mac Fairbairn replacing Palmer Wetzel for Jackson. For Kelly Walsh, Isaac Mamet is back in there on the four. Fairbairn inside pass intended for Hannah. Uh, never got there. And I don't know, Mac. That, if Hannah was not very open. He was double teamed and that pass went off. Andrews hand out of bounds. Turnover. 2-12 left in the first quarter. It's been Kelly Walsh, 15-6 lead now. As Isaac Mamet drives the lane. Isaac Larson with him. A little bit of a height mismatch there. Jaden Nichols with it now. Bounce pass to Jack. Jack Nichols drives on Seb Brunner. He is quick. Oh. Jack Nichols reach in there by Fairbairn. And I thought they were going to whistle Mac, but they don't. I don't That's know what the call is. Two charge. charge. Ooh. Call the charge on Jace Nichols. That's Mac almost got away with him. I thought he reached in there. Jackson Ball. We'll see if the Bronx can settle down here as Seb pitches it over to Gavin Keelan. Sepp drives the lane, kicks over to Isaac Larson. Uh. He took steps as Seb got a little fumbly there with his footwork and the turnover on the travel. Buck 42 left in the opening frame, and it's Isaac Mamet with it now. He hit a big, or sorry, Jace Nichols with it. Gives it to Jaden. Jaden tries the paint, turned around by Fairbairn. Here's Isaac Mamet. Good baseline drive. His oh. shot no good. Rebound, three of them. None of them go in. Finally, Hannah pulls down the board. Seb Brunner up to Isaac Larson. Back to Keelan. Back to Seb. Keelan, Isaac Larson, wide open oh. three at the baseline, and it won't go. Connor Daigle pulls down the board. The 6'4 senior and Kelly Walsh with it again. Peppel with it. Landed Peppel out to Jaden Nichols. Jaden working on Isaac Larson. Far side Mamet. Isaac Mamet watched by Keelan. Gets a nice screen. Doesn't make use of it. Drives baseline on Hannah. Kick over to Peppel. Up and in. Good ball movement there in the find. The open man, Pebble, just standing wide open to the paint. Mac Fairbairn will try a three. That's off the front of the iron. No good. Rebound into the hands of Pebble. Stolen away by Isaac Larson. Jump ball. And the Bronx, I believe, have the arrow here. I have 17-7, but that's not the official score. 17-6, Kelly Walsh. Jackson Ball, Fairbairn comes out, replaced by A.J. Fowler as Coach Hatfield tries to identify somebody who can hit from distance here. Carson Harlan also in the game now has the ball now. Double team trap gets it to Hannah. He's double teamed, so somebody has to be open. That's Keelan. He drives oh, the lane. Nice. Hannah up and in. Andrew Hannah oh. off the feed from Gavin oh, Keelan. Oh, called it a charge. Oh, so they're going to erase Man. that off the board. Charge on Hannah. Hmm. That's his first. No, it was on Keelan. On Keelan. So down to 15 seconds. Mamet with the ball. We'll see if the Trojans play for a last shot here. Mamet. Turn around to the right block, gets it to Peppel. His shot uh, blocked by Keelan before it ever got off, though, a whistle. I think it's on Fowler. A lot of yep. whistles in the girls' game, and this officiating crew blowing on those things to start this one. 9.1 seconds, Peppel to the line, a 43% free throw shooter, and he has that one. 18 to 6, Kelly Walsh, and things could not have started any worse for Coach Hatfield and the Bronx as if they weren't woke up out of the hotel, they're, they're woke up now. Second one missed. Hannah with a rebound. Seb Brunner, time Don't ticking down. Seb oh. collides momentarily with Pep with 
Yeah, I was going to say, they got to get, they and gotta get the crowd out of their heads. They count down early. Can't get the shot off. So 18-6 to six after one. It's been all. Kelly Walsh will be back with the second quarter. You're enjoying Bronx basketball and Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000. 733-6000. Your home for Jackson Hole High School Sports is KZ95. Let's get back to the game. Thank you everyone for joining us here on Jackson Hole Radio YouTube channel or on KZ95, 95.3. Second quarter just underway and it's not a good start for the Bronx. They're down 18-6 in the early going. And Mamet hits a three to make it 21-6. And Kelly Walsh picking up where they left off last night. Just everybody on the score sheet. A.J. Uh. Fowler three rattles in and out. No good. Rebound counter Deggle. Jackson still haven't found the feel from beyond the arc yet. Far side, Jaden Nichols, the senior. Jaden kicks it out to Eager. Mason Eager will try a three. That's no good. Rebound Carson Harlan. He'll bring it up. Fires one cross court. Aww. Seth Brunner, and that was not a good pass. Mason Eager right there to pick it off. Very athletic Kelly Walsh team. You can't just chuck it around like last night. You got to be sure with your passes. Good move in the lane there by oh. Isaac Mamet. Can't get the shot to go, but taps in his own rebound and makes it 23 to 6. And the Trojans just jumping all over the Bronx. Isaac or Carson Harlow with it now. He drives into the paint. Pop over to A.J. Fowler. His shot no good. Hannah got whacked in the face. No call. And here comes Nichols the other end. Jaden Nichols up and in. And the Trojans are just dominating the Bronx in every aspect of the game. We'll be right back with a timeout on the floor. It's Kelly Walsh, 25, Jackson, 6. You're listening to Bronx Basketball on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. At my country Linens paper and cleaning supply outlet, we've got you covered. The action here. <laughs> Gavin Keelan with it for the Jackson Bronx to Seb Brunner. Seb works with the Keelan here in the near elbow. Back to Seb. It's been Seb and Gavin up high to try to deal with that zone. Baseline three. Good. And Jackson sure needed that one. And they get it from Carson Harlan. Who makes it 25 to 9. Bronx needed a bucket in the worst way. Now a whistle here. That's going to be on... The Trojans, I believe, a block. Uh, no, it's on Fowler. Jackson. It's on A.J. Fowler, who picks up his second. Mason Eager with it now, trying to put a move on Seb Brunner. Works it near side here to Jaden Nichols. Hands off to Jace Nichols, who drains it, the 6'1 sophomore. 
Makes it 27 to nine, and Kelly Walsh are hitting their shots for sure. Seb Brunner over to AJ Fowler inside to Hannah. Hannah, nice turnaround spin move up and over Connor Daigle. Good. And it's 27 to 11. Daigle just giving away too much there. He's 6'4. Hannah's 6'7. Jaden Nichols with it now. Spin move on Harlan. Hands off to brother Jace. He drives the lane. His shot no good. Keela with a big board. And there's a one and done. There's got to be more of those if you're going to get back into this. Carson Harlan kick out to Keelan to Seb. Brunner works it inside to Hannah. Hannah back out to Seb. He'll try a three from the near oh. elbow. Way off the mark. And the rebound of the back door is Jace Nichols. Seb had the open look, just did not shoot that well. There's a three from Kelly Walsh. That was an air ball from Mason Eager. Out of bounds, Jackson Ball. Substitutions, Willis Witherite checks in for Jackson, replacing Seb Brunner after that three ball shot. Larson and Coach Hatfield desperate into. right now to find somebody who can hit from distance. So far, Jackson's only shooter has been Carson Arlen, who got one. Isaac Larson trying to direct traffic out there. Harlan with it now. Back to Isaac. Larson has it back to Harlan. He'll try the three. That's no good. Oh. Isaac Larson rebounds, saves it. No, he didn't. He's out of bounds. Good try by Isaac Larson. Good hustle. Just could not quite save it. 4-4-4 four, four, four on the board. 4-44 in the second. Jackson down 16 to the Trojans who are hitting everything they throw up. There's a drive uh. and the bucket. Jaden Nichols and a chance to make it a three-point play. I believe that is on Carson Harlan. Harlan. I believe. We believe. Yep. Spot of the foul. Wetzel will check back in for Gavin Keelan. And it is on Carson Harlan. His first team fourth to the line. Jaden Nichols, 64% free throw shooter, and he donks it off the back of the iron. No good. Isaac Larson with a rebound. Isaac weaving his way through Trojans. Pump fake. Puts a man in the air. Now to Carson Harlan to Witherite. Witherite double team. Gets it to Harlan. Harlan oh. looking inside for Hannah. That ball was tipped. Getting a hand on it was Jace Nichols. And now the pass to him goes out of bounds. Got to be more careful with the passing. You said that, Kimmy. You noticed that last night this team didn't pass well, the Bronx. And against this Kelly Walsh team, I think they're even more athletic. They just can get in the way of passes. Peppel gives it to Jace Nichols. Three, top of the key. No good. Rebound. Boy, that's got to be over the back of somebody, but no call. Okay. Seb Brunner had Jaden Nichols climbed over the back of him, but Seb has it now. No hurt. Floats one into Hannah. Hannah triple oh. team. Can't get the shot. His own rebound, though, is blocked Whoa. away. Mm. Andrew Hannah, you got to make that first shot because, boy, by the time you get the rebound, there's a block there as Jaden Nichols was denied, but in the left is Mason Eager with the board and bucket, and it's a 20-point Kelly Walsh lead. Seb Brunner with it now. Near side, watched by Jason Nichols. That 2-3 zone of the Trojans, given the Bronx problems. Seb works it near side to Larson. Back to Seb, back to Isaac Larson. Oh. Looking inside, not a good idea. Trying to find Witherite, but they got away with it. That pass is tipped. Goes to Brunner, inside to Hannah, up and in. But again, more careless passing by the Bronx. And that's going to be their undoing if they can't take care of the ball. 3.08 to go in the half. Jackson down big. Kelly Walsh, step back three from Jace Nichols, uh, no good, and he gets bumped. And I think he was had his foot on the line, so I don't think this is a three. I think they'll give him two here. Jace Nichols, the sophomore, he's their three-ball shooter, by the way, averaging eight points a game, 61% from the line. And his first is no good. Missed it badly. And I think he's only getting two here, although the ref just showed two more. So maybe that was a three. I thought he had his foot on the line. And he gets that one. They will give him all three. 32 to 13. That means he was in the act of shooting a three when he was fouled. So he gets three free throws, just to inform you. That one rattles in and out, so he makes only one of the three. Jackson with the ball and just under three to go in the half. Isaac Larson with it now. Bounce pass into Witherite, trying to find Hannah. And another pass inside that does not get there. Too many Trojan hands everywhere. Hmm. 
Sepp Brunner will trigger in from under his own basket to Isaac Larson. Larson right in front of the Kelly Walsh bench. Baseline Brunner. Brunner sticking his foot out was Jace Nichols trying to block that pass. He'll do anything to get an appendage in the way of the ball. With the right in the lane. He's got to just put that shot up. Sepp Brunner to wither it. You got to shoot Willis right there. Both times Willis was open. Kick out. Here's Palmer Wetzel. Oh. No good. Br uh, Hannah with a rebound. Does come up with it. Jace Nichols is down. Oh. He got hit in the head. That shot no good. Jace Nichols still holding his head and he might be hurt. Yeah. And they'll call a timeout here to attend to Jace Nichols. Hannah inadvertently hit him in the head and He's right. trying to shake it off. I think he hit Hannah the last time around, so we're even. All right, we're just trading. <laughs> yeah, Witherite had a couple of looks, and I'd rather Willis shoot and miss than pass and miss. And we're ready to go here. Mamet will inbounds right here at the bottom of your screen. 2.21 to go in the half. Kelly Walsh up 32-13. Jaden Nichols going to drive all by himself. Too strong with that one as Sepp Brunner was in his hip pocket all the way there. Palmer Wetzel with it now for Jackson. Floats one into Hannah. Back out to Isaac Larson. Larson picks up a double team to Wetzel. Now to Brunner. Brunner drives the lane. Floats it to oh. Hannah. And that pass is tipped. And they, they've got to shoot these threes. They're open looks from beyond the arc. And Jackson's just not taking and They're trying to force it into Hannah. They've got to shoot from distance and pull Kelly Walsh out of this zone. I feel like they've been missing too many of them. And they're yeah. losing some of that confidence. Isaac Larson with it now. Seb will try a three. God, Seb Brunner makes it happen. You got to do that. I, Too many passes into Hannah, and Kelly Wall sees it coming. There's Mamet with it now. Isaac Mamet, the senior. Long three there, in and out from Mamet. No good. Rebound Keelan. Jackson with the ball now. Buck 35 to go with the half. Floats one into Hannah. Hannah got pushed by Mamet. He'll be the guilty party. That's the fourth foul on Kelly Walsh this half. And the first on Isaac Mamet. Into the game. <coughs> Connor Degel for Kelly Walsh. Isaac Larson, the lefty with it now. Gavin Keelan back to Larson. There's that double team trap. Larson gets it to Brunner. Same spot he hit the three from last time, and this time he's no good. Uh -huh. Peppel with a rebound, reach in by Wetzel, and they're going to get Palmer for reaching in as Peppel had control of the ball. Oh, they gave it to Keelan. Gavin Keelan, okay. They were both there, but... Keelan's second. Mamet with it now with just over a minute to go in this second quarter. Peppel watched by Keelan. Pass into Eric Whitley seeing his first action, and he lost the handle. It'll be Jackson Ball. And the Bronx will take position. They trail 32-16. Seb Brunner will let Gavin Keelan do the inbounds pass here. Keelan right here at the bottom of your screen at the half court. Gets it to Seb. Back to Keelan. Gavin Keelan to Seb Brunner. Seb Brunner and Keelan pitch a catch. Now Keelan's going to try a three. Rattles in and out. So close. But it wouldn't go. Rebound Mamet. Mamet brings it down that far side. Now drives baseline. Nobody has him. So he shoots. Oh. No good. His own rebound is up and in. Isaac Mamet for a big guy. He just took that all by himself, coast to coast. Went down that far sideline, then down the baseline. His first shot missed. He got his own rebound. Hannah with a triple team. Seps wide open, won't take the oh. shot. Isaac Larson to Hannah, his left-hander. Good, up and over Mason Eager. And too many Bronx are passing up shots and now coming up. Mamet looks like he's gimpy a little bit. I didn't see what happened to him. Hannah's doing what he can do underneath, but it's very difficult to get him the ball in the zone defense. And now checking in for the first time for Jackson is Drew Griebel. I believe when I just watched it on our delay over there, I think he went to steal the ball from uh, Larson and just kind of fell. Connor Degel is, yeah, holding something to his head and walking out. He'll take an early break to oh. the 
locker room. And we're 26 seconds away from the end of the half. Jackson dialing up full pressure here. Into Caden Boyce, seeing his first action. Boyce in trouble, double team, but he does get it away to Jaden Nichols. Drives the right block, kick out to Eager. Mason Eager shot, no good. Rebound Keelan. Jackson has it. Ten seconds to go in the half. Don't. Bounce pass to Griebel. Griebel, double team trap, trying to get out of there. Tries uh. to pass it to Larson. Out of bounds. Jackson has it, though. That went off of Caden Boyce. Two seconds to go. We'll see if Jackson has a set play here. They bring in Fowler, and guess who's going to get this ball? As Jackson will try to get it to their three-ball guy, A.J. Fowler. Larson with it, inbounds, floats one to Hannah, puts ah. it right back up, no good, and that's how the half will end. So the first half in the books, the score, the Kelly Walsh Trojans 34, the Jackson Bronx 18. We'll be right back with the halftime show on the home of the Bronx, KZ95, the Jackson Hold Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the diamond. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh. It looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes it out. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Back here at the half, Kelly Walsh High School, where the Trojans have come out firing and have a 34 18 lead over the Jackson Bronx. Uh, Jackson Bronx is going to have to make adjustments in the locker room. And if I'm Coach Hatfield, one of those adjustments I make is stop trying to get the ball to Andrew Hanna. A little I mean, bit and take a I, chance with those threes. Just do I, it. I understand the temptation when you got 6'7", All-State Andrew Hanna. You want to get the ball in his hands and... But I, it's almost to the point, and I'm not saying they should do this, almost to the point where I, I sit Andrew Hand on the bench so no one will try to pass to him. Or they might still <laughs> try to pass to him if he's sitting. They might. Uh, you have got. Maybe whoever the tall guy is. Please, there. you've got to take shots. There have been open looks. Uh, I like there's been good fast ball movement by the Jackson Bronx. You've had times where Larson, Harlan, Brunner all had a look. Or, or even Keelan it just put it up. Put it up immediately. Trust that you got Hannah down low. He might rebound it for you, but they have got to start shooting from distance because this passing has been problematic. The passing has not been good. The passing is telegraphed, and the passing, they know going in. Kelly Walsh knows going in, you want to get it to number 21, and it's just been very difficult to do so. Uh, I, if you got any kind of breath of space and time, let it fly if you're the Bronx. And I hope that's what the message is at the half is fire him because you're going to need threes to get back in this. You're down 34-18. What does the stat sheet look like starting with Kelly Walsh? I don't have him. Uh-oh. 
Well, <laughs> what happened to our s statistician? Well, um, she walked out. I, I asked for the end of the game. Okay. Our girl that takes it uh, for the boys, and yeah. I tried to get it at half, and I she walked out already. I did ask a couple other people, but um, they haven't gotten out of the stands yet. So All right. there might still be a possibility, but uh, at the same time, I don't think we're going to have halftime stats for the boys. Well, what well, you've seen from Kelly Walsh is what they've done all season, what they did last night, and that's good scoring from everybody. Mason Eager leads the team in scoring on the season with 14.7 a game. The freshman, he's had a good game, but, you know, when you look at the stats, everybody scores on this team. Jack Nichols averages nine. Jaden Nichols averages eight. Jace Nichols averages eight. Isaac Mamet averages ten. They all score, and any one of them can score, and that's what's e tough to defend Kelly Walsh is they don't have any one guy that shoots threes. They'll all shoot threes. They yeah. don't have any one guy who plays down low in the post. They kind of do that by committee. There's no uh, one set way they play. They put five guys out there. They say, just go play sandlot ball, you know, and they, uh, it's working for them. For the Jackson Bronx, that 2-3 zone that they're seeing from Kelly Walsh that invites shooting from the perimeter. Uh, just the uh, invitation has not been answered by the Bronx. They didn't shoot much last night uh, from distance. It didn't shoot well and didn't shoot often. And again today, they're just not launching shots. You've got to at least try because anything pounded inside of Hannah is not getting there. Yeah. Too many Kelly Walsh hands are getting in the way. When Hannah has had his hands on the ball, he's having a pretty good game. I can imagine the leads them in scoring. But again, we just we got to have more of shooting from distance. Jackson's going to have to do something they've been unable to do the last couple of years, and that's have a big second half. Usually that third quarter has been problematic. Last night, oh, my goodness, they had a third quarter where they scored four points in total. The whole second half, as you pointed out, Kimmy, wasn't good mm -hmm. for Jackson. They're going to have to come out and be a different team here because Kelly Walsh is probably – not going to slow up much here at home, even though they're playing their third game back to back to back. They played Thursday night, Friday night, and again tonight. Jackson's on their second game in a row. The more fatigued team should be the Trojans, but we'll see. I don't know. I mean, if I look, we've got 18. Jackson. For the first half tonight, we yeah. had 12 last night for the second half. That's not that's not enough points. Not at all. Ball's not going to the basket really for anyone on the black team with any regularity. Jackson's out of the locker room first, taking warm-ups, as you can see if you're joining us on our YouTube channel. We hope you're there. Go to YouTube, type in Jackson Old Radio. That's our channel. While you're there, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything this season. We're also on the regular terrestrial radio for those of you back home in Jackson, 95.3, Casey 95, 95.3 FM, and then on uh, the interwebs with the audio signal worldwide at Casey95.live. We'll be right back with the start of the second half after these words. You're enjoying Bronx basketball and Casey 95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareinns.com. At High Country...
go to the next guy, but it, it's not a good feeling when you're, you know, supposedly the triple that threat. Pressure, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know on you him. have only one shot, and if you miss that, you're going to be sitting. Like, let, Which let your him, second one and your third one might go in. Let him find the range a little bit, yeah, because it's tough to come up off the bench, get one look at a shot, and, and find it just dribble out, and then you're sitting again. To find that three ball guy, there has to be a little bit of consistency. We'll see. We're back to the action here as we start the third quarter. Jackson with the ball, Seb Brunner. Yeah, that double team, and it's kicked away. That's the second time Jace Nichols has I'm kicked his foot out. You're supposed to put your foot out. You're not supposed to do that, you're but it's, not. there's not a penalty. It's not a foul, so he's like... The Trojans will get anything they can in the way of a pass. Seb Brunner with it far side. There's that double team over to Keelan. This is what the Bronx tried to do to start the game, to try to get that 2-3 zone loosened up a bit. Gavin Keelan back to Seb Brunner. Seb works it over to Isaac Larson, who gets uh -huh. it inside of Will Smith, the right, who lost the ball to Isaac Mamet. Mamet with the steal for Kelly Walsh and another careless pass for Jackson. Top of the key, that pass got away from Jack Nichols into the backcourt, that's over and back. And both teams turn it over on their first possession here to start the second half. 7.25 to go in the third. Jackson got a big hole to dig out of. Keelan inbounds to the backcourt to Seb Brunner. Gets a screen from Keelan, now gives him the ball. Keelan oh, almost had it stolen away there by Jaden Nichols. Jaden still whacking at it, and now Seb the wither right to Isaac Larson. Puts oh. a man in the air, and right over the top of him, Jack Nichols was sky high. He had nowhere to land except for on number 14. I think I saw Hannah do that at one game, too. Jack, Jack Nichols radioed the tower and said, I'm clear for landing on number one, four, on runway one four. Unfortunately, that runway was already occupied by Isaac Larson. So the foul there. That's the third, by the way, on Jack Nichols. Keelan oh. with the ball to Hannah. That's out of bounds. It's like they're not. Like, nah, nobody wants to shoot. Gavin Keelan has got to take the shoot. You can't make a two-foot pass to Hannah. No. Just shoot it. Because Hannah's thinking Keelan's going to shoot yeah, it Hannah's and waiting right for the rebound. Yeah. There's a three ball. That's a miss from oh. Jaden Nichols. Rebound Jackson. Isaac Larson comes up with it. Yeah, you get. There has to be more guys who want to shoot talk on the Bronx somehow or something. They're just not. Gavin Keelan will try a three. Oh. That line drive signature style of his, no good. Hannah with a rebound, but lost the handle, and coughs it up to Jaden Nichols, who coughs it up to Isaac Larson. Now the Bronx have it. Larson, Keelan. Over to Seb Brunner, right through the double team. It looked like he traveled his pass to Hannah. No so good. Too. Right there is Jaden Nichols standing right there guarding Hannah. Ural step in the lane, up and in. It's Jace Nichols, our first points of the half, and it took two minutes to get there. Ooh. Larson to with a right to Hannah. His oh. shot no good. Andrew with his own rebound. That won't go either. And now Isaac Mamet has it. And now if you're the Bronx and Andrew Hannah goes cold, you really got to wonder where your scoring's going to come from. Mamet, his shot up and in. And I thought he drew the foul. No call. But either way, it's a 20-point lead for the Trojans. Their biggest lead of the night. With a right, he's in a battle with Mamet. And a whistle, and they're going to get Isaac for a reach in, I think, or a jump. No, they're going to get Isaac. For Mamet, that's his second, team second. Gavin Keelan to inbounds here. To Seb Brunner, far side, Isaac Larson. Larson being watched by Mason Eager. That ball was thrown to the backcourt, and another giveaway by Jackson. Poor pass. It's Jack Nichols with it now. Over to Jaden Nichols, drives the lane, left-handed layer, no good. Rebound, Hannah, whistle. And a game that, boy, has really not had a lot of flow because of all these whistles. Palmer Wetzel into the game now for Jackson. I don't know who that. Number three. Um, Mason so Eager, the, the freshman, picks up his second. Don't know what he did. Seb Brunner, double team, so he kicks it to Wetzel. He'll try a shot, 15-footer, no good. Rebound, Jack Nichols. 
Jack bringing it up. The sophomore, one of two Nichols sophomores, gives it to his twin brother, who gives it to Mamet. Mamet, nice no-look pass, but it wasn't that nice, I guess. Never did get to Jack Nichols. Stolen away. Bronx have it. Seth Brunner, he'll drive. Kick out over to Isaac Larson. Fumbles the pass to him, but Larson has it. Double team. Larson to Brunner. Brunner steps around a couple of guys. Spin move. Now over to Larson. Just can't get a shot off. Finally, Brunner will take one. Baseline three, no good. Rebound is Jaden Nichols. He's fouled immediately by, I believe, Wetzel. Could have been Larson. It is Larson. Mm, no. no, it's Wetzel. His second. 14, 15, they look kind of the same. Kelly Walsh, Paul Jackson come out of the locker room, and if they were looking for the magic shooting potion, don't have it yet. Jack Nichols with it now. Team's leading assist man works it to twin brother Jace. Jace Nichols working on Palmer Wetzel. Oh. He almost coughed it up, but it went right to Peppel. Now Nichols' pass intended for Eager is tipped out of bounds. No, it was intended for his brother Jace Nichols, but tipped out of bounds by Jackson. Trojans retain possession. Jace Nichols will inbound. The 6 1 sophomore floats one top of the key to Mason Eager. Eager. Working on Isaac Larson pulls up 15 footer from the foul from the free throw line is good and that was too easy too much room for Mason Eager the freshman who leads the team in scoring with 14 seven a game Brunner kick out to Larson Isaac Larson's in trouble got Eager all over him to Willis with a right wide open oh. Brunner and his pass to Henny you got to take that shot if you're Seth Brunner you've got to take that shot you're wide open I and the pass to Hannah off the mark, out of bounds. It's like they're not in sync or something the last two nights. Like, I mean, besides the execution, which is not there, the decision-making is the beginning of your problem. Seb is open. Take the three. The pass to Hannah was not great, but even when they are great, Hannah's not open. He hasn't been all afternoon. You've got to take that three. I Whistle believe. down at the other end. That's going to be on of Hannah. Andrew Hannah. That's his first of the game. Kelly Walsh with the ball. Inbounds pass coming from Jack Nichols all the way out in the backcourt to Isaac Mamet, who tracks it down. The senior brings it back in. And works it far side to Jack Nichols. Jack Nichols spin move on Wetzel. Now kicks it out to Mamet. Mamet gets a screen from Connor Deggle. Drives baseline, shut off by Hannah. Now Deggle will try one. No good. Too strong. Rebound on the back door was Wetzel for the Bronx. Jackson bring it up. Isaac Larson. He's open, or Harlan oh. rather, and his shot just short. And Jackson cannot get a field goal from anybody wearing black. Jack Nichols will try a three. Uh -huh. That's good, and it just looks so easy when the Trojans do it. 43-18, Kelly Walsh with three minutes to go in the third. Brunner, nice pass to Witherite. Willis kicks it back out to Seb Brunner. He drives the left block, gives it to Hannah. Beautiful feed there. I don't mind that pass. That's a nice drive. You attract some attention, then you dish to Hannah. That worked. And Jackson's within 23 now. Jack Nichols posts up, 18-footer rattles oh. in and out. Rebound fought for. Whoa, Deggle whoa, has it. Whoa, whoa, Deggle whoa, whoa, gets whoa, it to whoa. Mamet. He loses it. Scramble for the ball and finally tracked down by Deggle. Connor Deggle works it to Jaden Nichols. Back to Deggle. Now outside Mamet. Long three off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound Seb Brunner. Oh. Seb coming the other way for Jackson. He's got wide open. Andrew Hanno lays oh. it up and in. Nice two-on-one break there. And a timeout as Coach Hatfield saw two good things in a row. And he says, let's talk about those things. We'll stay here. 43. Why do we call 22. timeouts though when we got a flow going? Can you tell me that? Do you yeah. If, they're, if it's going good, don't you want to keep them out there? Sometimes. I, I don't know. I don't know. That I, I, I'm obviously not a coach. And two, I obviously didn't play basketball. Two, which makes you the perfect color analyst. That's great. I, well, I did. That's why I you're did. the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> you don't let me talk, so that's all right. Sorry, go. 
43-22, Trojans lead 2-10 to go in the third. It's been Kelly Walsh from the get-go. Yeah. We thought maybe the Bronx would come out here a little angry about losing to Rock Springs last night, but so far they look a little sleepy. Kelly Walsh playing their third game in as many days. Certainly don't look tired. The Trojans really spread it around. Their strength is they're young, and they just uh, they get scoring and production from everybody on the floor. You never know who's going to touch it. And that 2-3 zone they get in on defense that invites shots from distance. Well, the Bronx just have not been able to respond and get them out of that zone and do anything about it. Bronx answer to that 2-3 zone is to be, miss threes, not take threes, or try to pass to a triple covered Andrew Hanna. None of those options working so far. No, we got to make those shots. We got to take Jayden them and Nichols. make them. Jaden has it, works it to Mamet. Isaac Mamet on, on Hanna. Now a kick out to Eager. His three is too short. Rebound, pinballs around on everybody. And out of bounds off a Jackson Bronx last. Kelly Walsh ball. They have the 21 point lead with under two to go in the third. Inbounds Nichols to Mamet over to Mason. Eager, eager, nice bounce pass to Peppel. Peppel kick out wide open. Mamet, he tries one. Good. Somehow Isaac Mamet got lost in that. And he had an open look three. Jackson with the ball. Seth Brunner floats one over to. Carson Harlan, he drains at him. That's what the Jackson needs more of. Harlan was wide open, plenty of room, and he easily hit that triple. Ah, good defense there by A.J. Fowler. Took the ball away from Jace Nichols. Nice turnover. Jackson with it now. Seb Brunner picks up a double team. Bounce pass into Hanna. Hangs oh. on the rim and goes in. Boy, that just hung there for a bit. Good job by Seb Brunner to beat the double team and make a nice feed to Andrew Hanna. Nichols with it now. Jace works it to Eager, or rather Jaden Nichols. Now to Mamet. Isaac Mamet backs Hanna up to the hole. His pass picked off by Seb Brunner. He wanted to get it to Mason Eager, but Seb got a hand in there, took it away. Jackson with a couple of turnovers here, trying to push back. Keelan to Seb. Seb Brunner back to Gavin Keelan. Over to A.J. Fowler, baseline three. Off the mark, rebound, fought for it. Kelly Walsh comes Whoa. up with it. Peppel, Landon Peppel almost had it stolen away and finds a wide open cutter in Mason Eager. And every time Jackson shows a little light, Kelly Walsh comes with an answer. Seth Brunner in front of his own bench now. Puts a move on Nichols. Has the ball poked away. Gets it back. Thought about a three, but he picks up a double team. Now a wide open Carson Harlan. He hits that two in a row from Carson. And maybe it's Harlan who will get Kelly Walsh to get out of that three. Here's... Nichols driving the lane with time running out, and that'll do it as Gavin Keelan heaves one, and that's the way we'll end the third with the score. The Trojans 48, the Bronx 30, Jackson within 18. We'll see. They're going to need a heck of a finish. Do we have a heck of a finish in store for you? Well, you'll have to find out when we come back. You're enjoying Bronx basketball at Jackson Old Radio Network. Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Uh, the Jackson Bronx are going to get a win on this road trip. They're going to have to have the best fourth quarter they've had all season. Do they have it in them? We'll find out. Meanwhile, Kelly Walsh not exactly trying to sit on the lead. They've always had an answer when the Bronx come pushing back. They still have an 18-point lead, 48 to 30, as we begin the final eight minutes of regulation. Fowler, Brunner, Keelan, Harlan, and Hannah on the floor for the Bronx. Inbounds pass coming from Nichols over to his brother. Mason Eager, baseline three, no good. Backdoor rebound by Hannah. Good board by Andrew. 
And one and done for Kelly Walsh. A.J. wide open for his baseline three. He can't get that to go. That is A.J.'s shot. He was money with it all last year, and he struggled this year to, to knock that home. And he misses that, but it's out of bounds. Jackson Ball, Seth Brunner, looking for somebody open. It's Andrew Hanna who gets it back to Brunner. Sepp picks up that double team, cross court. Pass off the hands of Gavin Keelan. I said they'd have to do more cross court passing because that guy on the far side of the court is open. Yeah. That one was just off the mark and no good. And the turnover to Kelly Walsh. Mamet works it to Jaden Nichols. Now to Mamet. Isaac Mamet drives the lane on Hanna. Now back to Nichols. Jaden to Mamet. Mamet will try a three. Two short. Rebound. Keelan comes sky high with the board. Gavin works it up ahead to Brunner on the far side. Brunner pushing the pace. AJ, that's his other spot. He doesn't want to take it, though. Back to AJ. He will now. Han oh. Fowler just misses in and out. Hannah couldn't get the rebound from Mamet. AJ just cannot find the range, but Hatfield's leaving him in there, trying to find somebody who can hit that triple. Chase Nichols with it now, hands off to Mamet. Isaac Mamet working on Fowler. That's a mismatch up and in. Hannah had been guarding him all afternoon. Somehow he, Mamet got loose to Hannah, and Fowler's just not tall enough to handle Mamet. Far side, it's Carson Harlan to A.J. over to Sepp Brunner. Sepp into Keelan. He's got a wide open 15-footer. Going to drive in and up and in. Good job by Gavin Keelan. Thought about the shot, pump fake, and then just went right to the hole. Put up and in off the glass. Mammoth over to Jack Nichols. Jack to Jaden Nichols, spin move in the lane. His little six-foot pop shot, no good, but with the reach-in foul, it's going to be Carson Harlan. 6'10 to go, time becoming the enemy of Jackson. 60-32 to 32 to the line is Jaden Nichols, a 64% free-throw shooter. Jaden, the 6'2 senior, and he's got that one. And patience for AJ's run out as Hatfield pulls him in place of Isaac Larson. We'll see if the lefty can do it. That second shot, no good. Oof. And we got a 51-32 game. Quickly the other way. Hannah puts one up and in, but we got Seb Brunner on the floor and a foul again. Been a lot of whistles in the girls' game and the boys now. Seb Brunner floats one out to Carson Harlan. Near side, he and Keelan play pitch and catch. Harlan, far side of Brunner. Oh, Brunner, Brunner, no look pass. That's off the of hand of Mason Eager. He wanted to get one into Gavin Keelan, that no look pass, but it didn't work. Too many Trojans in the way of these passes. Seb Brunner with it now. He's got Hannah waiting on that back door, but can you get it to him? Isaac Mamet knows he's there. Oh. Brunner, top of the key, looking around. Tequila, that's inside of Hannah. Good job. You could see they were just desperately trying to get it into Andrew, and finally it was Keelan who was able to find Andrew open. Coming the other way, Kelly Walsh out of control was Jace Nichols, and it turns it over. Andrew Hanna with a runner oh, up and in. And Hanna makes it 51-36. Here comes a bit of a comeback for the Bronx as Coach Hatfield clapping, clapping, and encouraging his Bronx. Hanna tried to steal it from Mamet, couldn't do it. Baseline three, Jace Nichols, good. And Kelly Walsh with another answer and Kelly Walsh with a timeout and a timeout to try to bust the momentum Jackson was showing some life but you never know who the poison is going to come from when you're a Trojan it's any of the three nickels it could be Mason Eager Mammoth and that time the three really took the wind out of the sails it will look like a comeback there's still time 5.08 to go in the fourth. Trojans 54, the Bronx 36. Jackson coming off a game last night where they just could not score, especially in the second half. Trying to turn that jinx around if they can. It'll be the Bronx ball. Gavin Keelan into Seb Brunner. 
Brunner lets it roll, 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 and finally picks it up in the midcourt. Bounce pass to Keelan, far side, open is Larson for a moment. Now back out to Brunner. Seb Brunner floats one into Keelan, who looked for Hannah, but he wasn't open. Lefty, Larson shot, no good. Rebound, Gavin Keelan. His putback won't go either. And it's Jace Nichols down with the board. Gives it to Mason Eager, the freshman on the far side, working on Seb Brunner. Eager spins him around, drives the lane. Seb falls down. Eager puts it in and a whistle. Another whistle. And I, I believe that's a charge. Boy, I didn't see a lot of contact there. Maybe Seb either, just kind of fell. I guess that's what you got to do to get the charge. Yeah, that worked. Eager's third foul. Runner to Keelan to a wide open. Harlan, he'll try a three. God, Carson Harlan has been the one bright spot for Coach Hatfield of the Bronx as he has made three from beyond the arc by my count. Far side, it's Mamet. Isaac Mamet with Hannah on him. Coming out to greet him at the perimeter. Mamet, near side elbow to Jaden Nichols. Drives the paint and another whistle. I believe that was... A little bit of contact there. Not much. It was Isaac Larson who he bumped with. Boy, they're just not letting much go this afternoon. Inbounds pass coming to Eager. Mason Eager puts Harland in the air and now kicks it out. Trojans not too eager to shoot here. A nice left-handed runner there by Jack Nichols. Very athletic. He's really good at that. The Nichols brother, Jack, Carson Harland. He's got the hot hand. He'll try it. Good! Carson Harland, that's a two. A long two, and it makes it 56-41 with 3.40 to go in the fourth. Trojans with the ball. It's Jack Nichols gives it to brother Jaden. Jaden now to Mamet. Mamet far side to Jace Nichols to Jack. Jack behind the back dribble, trying to wiggle free of Harlan. Now wide open underneath is Mason Eager. And somehow Mason slipped away from everybody, and the freshman put it up and in. Seb Brunner cross court pass to Harlan. Gets it back out to Keelan. Double team now. Gavin in trouble, but gets it to Seb Brunner. Seb back to Keelan. He'll try a long oh, three. Short. Two short. Rebound Larson. Puts his man in the air. Feeds Hannah up and in. Andrew Hannah leads the Bronx in scoring, but it hasn't been easy. Kelly Walsh with the ball now, 2.50 to go. Kelly Walsh with a 15-point lead. Backdoor pass, oh, that was pretty. As Mamet found Mason Eager cutting and gave him a little behind the back, no look pass. 60-43, and Kelly Walsh is showing off. Inside, Hannah, good. Andrew Hannah answers, 60-45. Kelly Walsh ball, Trojans. Jack Nichols flips it to Jace. Jace with it now. Draws Keelan out to the top. Oh, that pass intended for Jaden. Saved only momentarily. Keelan with it. Another whistle. And I don't. Okay. Well, they're going to cry. I mean, it didn't factor into the play. Jace Nichols is going to get whistled here. He dove for the ball, trying to get it from Keelan and made enough contact for the whistle. Meanwhile, Keelan was headed the other way with it. It, it just didn't matter. I, I, yeah, like, well, I guess if there's a foul. I mean, maybe foul. if you knock Keelan down and he coughed up the ball, but Keelan was long gone, headed to the bucket. Here's Isaac Larson, baseline three, rattles in and out. Wetzel with a rebound taken away from him, but now Hannah ah. finds loose change. His shot no good. Isaac Larson turnaround oh. shot. That won't go either. Isaac gets his own rebound. Brunner to Harlan. His long three too strong. Oh, Hannah with the rebound, on. and that is a foul. That's going to be Jace Nichols who took a swipe at Andrew Hannah after he fouled him. Uh, Jace just kind of took an errant swing at Andrew. I don't think he was trying to make contact at all, but he was just kind of mad at it, and now they're going to pull him out of there. Jace was upset in his battle for the rebound. Meanwhile, lost in all that was how many opportunities the Bronx had from in the paint and couldn't make any of them. Andrew Hanna from the line yes. gets that one, and it's 60-46. And don't look now, but boy, that last rarely took a lot off the clock. 
150 to go. Hannah's second ah. rattles in and out. No good. Rebound Jack Nichols. Oh, turn around. Oh. Bronx applying pressure, but Isaac Mamet with it now gets it to Peppel. He'll try a three. That's off the back of the iron. No good. Far side. Wetzel rebound. Ah. Can't save it. Gave it right to Isaac Mamet. Mamet cross court to Peppel. Landed Peppel. Top of the key. Too strong oh. for Jack Nichols. He collides with Seb Runner. The ball goes to Carson Harlan. Oh. His shot. No good. Larson with a rebound, and he's fouled. Yeah. Jackson just can't make any shots. <sighs> As Harlan missed right there underneath the basket, Larson with a nice rebound, but he gets fouled. He'll go to the line. That's the eighth foul on the Trojans, the first on Peppel. And to the line, Isaac Larson, the lefty, when we come back as a timeout on the floor with 1.24 to go. Jackson still trail by 14. We'll stay here with the timeout. Larson to the line is a 62% free throw shooter. It's usually very good from the strike. He's going to get a, he's going to get guaranteed two here as Jackson's in the bonus. So yeah. if he hits them both, he can make it a 12 point game. And then I don't know what you try to dial up if you're Coach Hatfield. I don't know either. The Trojans probably aren't going to be in a big hurry to shoot. No. Maybe though. And I don't know if you start getting into the fouling game, but if that's your idea, the Bronx still got some to give. They only have four team fouls. So you could start whacking guys, but you don't send them to the line yet. Larson will come out and toe the line here as finally Kelly Walsh breaks their huddle. On the far side, Coach Randy Roden sends out his troops, it's going to be the three Nichols brothers along with Eager and Mamet. So the same starting five for Kelly Walsh. Isaac Larson, the lefty, fires this one and gets it. Let's go, Isaac. And it's 60 47. And his second coming up here. Jackson's just got to get all these, you got to make everything. He does get them both, 60-48. It's a 12-point game. Jackson dialing up full court pressure. Oh, get down there, get Long down Long home down there. run pass to Isaac Mamet, up mm. and in. Isaac Mamet just got by everybody. Seb Brunner couldn't track him down. Carson Harlan into Ooh. Andrew Hanna. Ill-advised pass. Hanna kicked out to Brunner, but meanwhile a whistle. And another foul. I think it might be on as a Jace. This is on the Trojans, their ninth of the half. It's on, they still have Lynn and Peppel up there. Now they're waiting, waiting as Hannah goes to the line. Makes less than half of his free throws down on the 40 percentile. This oh. one is short, no good. Oh, hey, Rebound, fought on. for, goes into the hands of Jack Nichols. I don't know Jack where. Jack almost mm. coughed it up, but he draws a foul. That could have been Hannah, could have been I Larson, Larson. We'll see who it was. It'll be the fifth foul on Jackson, and that's what they got to do now is just start fouling with a minute five to go. Pass inbounds to Jack Nichols. Keep down there, keep down there. He gets it up ahead to Jace. Oh. Jace to Mamet, who's wide open. He won't take the shot, though. He's going to just try to burn clock. Mamet works it to Nichols. Cross court oh, whistle. And Larson. There wasn't much contact there either, but Jack and Jackson needs to foul, I guess. That's still just their sixth foul. So now they're in the bonus. With 51 seconds, it's Jack Nichols. Works it far side to Eager. Mason Eager gets contacted by Harlan. He'll send Mason to the line. He's the last guy you want at the charity stripe. He leads this team from the free throw line, an 80% free throw shooter. And I know he's the freshman, so you figure he doesn't have the poise of an upperclassman, but I don't know, a guy hitting 80% from the free throw line, I'm worried about making him Hit one, he does bury the first. Makes it 63-48, Kelly Walsh. Jackson a danger of losing their fifth straight game this season. Is that right? Or no, fourth. fourth, okay. Fourth. 
There's a fifth one in there. Eager uh, makes them both. And with 40 seconds left, it's Harlan with a long three. That's no good. Larson trying to track down the rebound of the back end, but can't get there. But it's out of bounds off a of Trojan. Jackson Ball, 34.9 seconds into Owen Kana, oh. who gives it back to Harlan, and another whistle. Harlan's got his palms up as if to say, what uh, now? I think and he called him out, so okay. this foot was on the line. That mysterious sideline. There's a pass floated up ahead to Mason Eager, who puts it up and in. Mason Eager got away oh. from an Owen Kana and makes it 66-48. Jackson with it now. Kana, bounce pass, near side. Larson picks up a double team and works it to Wetzel into Hannah. Hannah, boy, not a lot of room in there. He'll try a shot. No good. Out of bounds. Jackson Ball. Hannah just was in there with good defense by Mamet, who is one of those guys tall enough to deal with Andrew Hannah. Wetzel's pass knocked away by Mamet. Another bad pass stolen. And it's Kelly Walsh ball. And this one all but done. Isaac Mamet will just try to dribble out the clock. He will. And this one, a final. Kelly Walsh picks up just their second win at home to improve to 7-10 and 10 on the season for the Jackson Bronx. Their fourth straight loss and their record now 10-7 and 7 overall. We'll be back to wrap things up with a post-game show right here from Casper, Wyoming. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. The dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. You can sum up this road trip with four letters, and they end in U-C-K. I'm going to say Y, U-C-K. Yuck. This was not a good showing from the Jackson Bronx. This is no. a final. Kelly Wall, 66. Jackson, 48. And again, the Bronx struggled to put points up, and now... And you're trying to stop one leak, another happens, and the defense, they struggled to contain the Kelly Walsh Trojan shooting as the Trojans just fired from yeah. everywhere. They did the same thing last night to Star Valley, so really should be little wonder. Kelly Walsh coming on at the right time, it looks like. You got some uh, stats over there. We can take a look at these Kelly Walsh Trojans. What they do? Yeah, let's go with Jake Nichols. He has. Seven. Jack Nichols. Oh, Jack. Oh, sorry, I need that to you. <laughs> Jack Nichols, the sophomore, seven points. Average is nine a game. Okay. Um, we got uh, Mason Eager had two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. The freshman was sixteen points, a little bit better than his average. He's electric. He's going to be here for another three years. Scary. Um, Jaden, eight. 
Jade Nichols with eight points. That's right on his average. The senior of the Nichols three brothers. Um, Landon Peoples. Landon Peoples. Peoples. He has three. Um, Jace Nichols with eight. That's his average, yeah. And then we got Connor Daigle did two, and Isaac Mamet had, oh, hold on. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, wait, let me do that again. Four times three is 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Um, Isaac Mamet had 22. Yeah, even without knowing that he led them in scoring, I, I'm inclined to say he was the MVP for the Trojans. He had to deal with Hannah most of the night. He was matched up on Andrew Hannah and then still managed to pour in 22 points. His average is 10 points a game this year. Isaac Mamet, for me, was the most important player on the Trojan side of things. How about you? Yeah. I think he did a really go good job. Yeah, and I'll agree Mamet with that. had a heck of a game. When the game ended, by the way, if you saw, if you're watching our live stream, Andrew Hen immediately hugged Mamet. I don't know if the two know each other, but the, oh, I, did not I think see that. game, oh. game recognized game there. Those two had done a lot of battling this afternoon down in the paint, and Mamet, whoa, what a game he had. Andrew, though, had his points as well. How'd we look on the Bronx side of things? Well, we'll lead up to Hannah. Um, Brunner made three. Okay. One three. Harlan, 14, four threes. Um, Larson hit two from the line. And Keelan contributed two, and so did Wetzel. And then Hannah, two, four, six, eight, ten. Twenty-five. 25 for Andrew Hanna. Yeah. Pulled down a bunch of boards, too, but we don't have no. those numbers. Yeah, good game from Andrew Hanna. Who do you like there on the Bronx side of things? MVP? Uh, Hanna. Most valuable player. You're going to go with Hanna. I'm going to go with Carson well, Harlan. Actually, I was thinking Harlan. I just realized okay. that afterwards. I was thinking the time. Yeah, Carson no, played hard down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem with Hanna's game. Uh, it was just difficult to get him the ball uh, this afternoon in that 2-3 zone. But more importantly, when uh, on a game where Jackson, when the when the game plan going in, we knew would be you've got to shoot the three. The only guy to do it was Carson Harlan, and he yeah. for a while there had the hot hand. So I got to say, Carson, it was your game yeah, today. True. I mean, Kelly Walsh scored almost 18 points per quarter, except for the third quarter, where yeah. Jackson. I mean, it just it, it hurt us. It's, they're just so very steady. A lot. There's no one guy. They get scoring from everywhere, and they steadily score points in every quarter. I mean, what can you do? Where we scored two had two yeah. quarters had 12. Our last one had 18, but that first one. Ooh. Now the Bronx put on a push at the end. They just dug themselves too big of a hole. And, uh, yeah, so uh, once again, the final, let me pop that up. Yeah, it's Kelly Wall, 66, Jackson, 48. So it's a fruitless road trip for both the girls and boys. Both games lost last night in Rock Springs. And now both these here at Kelly Walsh in Casper. I know the boys and girls will be glad to get home, get on that bus and get home and regroup uh, because we still got postseason. There's really nothing to hurt yet for the boys. Still, uh, this team could be scary in the playoff run and the seating at this point not uh, negatively affected. So nothing hurt except for egos and confidence, yeah. and maybe we can boost that back up. We can get them back to play because they've just not been themselves the last few games. True enough. It's like we lost to Riverton and we, I don't know, we just lost something. Let's get it back. Yeah. Go boys. Wrap things up here courtside Kelly Walsh High School. Tonight's action, this afternoon's action brought to you by Young Life Jackson Hole. Young Life, all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. And the town square ends of Jackson Hole, including the Antler and Elk Country and Cowboy Village Resort and 49er Inn and Suites. For KZ95 at Jackson Hole Radio, I'm Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K. Good afternoon from Casper, Wyoming. See you again down the road.